share libtko source lib uh, auto keyframe set this to true and effectively I think what we're gonna want to do is when we're auto keyframing we're basically building up a log of diffs from the original one um, And that, this, when we save in MageWeave MMU, this causes the um, dirty pages to get cleared. So auto keyframe, we're gonna save keyframe uh, mem. And this will let us automatically do this. Now this I think should crash because this is, um, this is clearing those dirty pages, so it'll get really confused when we get a crash and we reset. In fact, I want to do fuzz with. I don't want to fuzz with any more than one. This will end up. Holy shit! Did that just work? Ah, uh, because we're loading the original keyframe, save keyframe name, uh, mem. Is this correct? Is this fine? Because we're clearing the dirty pages, which means we're not resetting them. I think this will eventually crash hard. Because it's going to be loading. Because doing save keyframe mem. This will not update the. This will not update the keyframe the last keyframe pads. Ooh, this might be broken. Um. Serialize. That serializes the dependency. How is this not crashing? If you look at deserialize, we're actually going to put that print in that we just took out. Uh, print keyframe change this keyframe. This should be set to true, but I'm guessing it's going to be false. If it's false, this is like wildly invalid, and I'm surprised it's not crashing. Okay. on come on give me a crash there we go uh keyframe changed true really keyframe changed is true keyframe changed is true get last keyframe name and the string that we're passing in What are these? I don't know how that is, um, I don't know how that's printing true. So in this case, uh, keyframe changed true because it is now calc sept, but it was none. Yep. What happened here? True, it was calc stepped and now it's none. Well, that's that's wrong. Uh, path. Okay. This should be. Uh, so we have the last keyframe name that was loaded, and we have this. I, if it's, if it's, uh, 
If we pass it none, we're going to load the original keyframe. So we're going to say if the if the keyframe that we want to load is not equal to what's get last keyframe name. So that's the most recent one that was loaded, but we actually want the original one. Path original keyframe here. Metafence, statefen. These return anything? Keyframe name X. We can just say if the keyframe name I'm just going to temporarily set this to true. We're just always going to have this on true. Um, that will cause it to always like purge the, the memory mappings, which means that this should always be safe. It means you can jump from any keyframe to any keyframe rather than it being smart and knowing how to do differential. So that means auto keyframes are fine. Uh... Save keyframe mem. What is that giving for the path? It's giving the last keyframe file name. So if we looked, so these keyframes are busted because they can't refer to their um, parents. So what we need to do is like, ah. Uh, I don't know how I want to lay out these files. It's actually really fucking hard. Like, so this is fine. This is going to serialize. This is going to say this is the parent. If this parent is incorrect, then we've created an invalid keyframe. Um, thank you for following drawn one. Drawn one last one. And uh, Lori Master as well. Thank you for following. Let me see if I can get save periodic, uh, save keyframe memory. I don't know, dude. I want to like buffer these up in memory. I need all these to go in one file for sure. So I need a way to save, I need a way to save a bunch of files. Save keyframe, this is gonna, this is gonna work. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a like mageweave MMU diff in here, I think. And then keyframes, will they just be the la latest part of the diff? And then they'll diff in memory and then they won't get flushed to disk. Huh. I'm gonna take a bathroom break, I'll be right back.
So, uh, this is about to become a pretty large refactor. Um, but I think it's the only way. And I think it needs to happen. <sighs> hmm. Yeah. Save. Serialize it in a state differentially to a vector. I don't know. Man, this is... Because I need this to work for remote workers as well. Which means they'll have a reference to a keyframe that doesn't exist. Um, uh, holy shit. I don't even like I don't even know where to start on this. This is uh this is basically I need to I need to have a way that I can like I need a file that's differential and can have like different states of memory at every instruction boundary. Um and to do that, I need I need a, a decent design of how that's going to work with networking. So in networking, it won't have a parent file that it can re refer to. Locally, it's easy as shit. You just have a local file and you build diffs off of it. But I think... Ah... Uh, man, this is tough. This is exceptionally hard. Uh, that'll cause a serialize. When we save a new keyframe, that will reset the state of here, which is good. I'm trying to think like if I want to have a, a, a handle to something like a file that's always open, like a mageweave mmu diff file that kind of can track all of the changes and then I latch them in. Like here, I would maybe do like a, a self dot persist dot uh, diff file dot like latch and that would like update the diff file and maybe we'd provide this uh, like uh, I count and it would like, <sighs> Oof. Okay, I can call into the mage we me file. I need to get access to the to the mage we've MMU. I think that is the first thing that needs to happen is I need to get access to the mage we've MMU from Franzia. Ah, uh, do I want to implement it internally? We could we could try to do it internal to this. Shit. Oh, get page. Load. 
might make a new Mage Weave MMU diff. That would have a Mage Weave MMU every time you do like a dot update. Okay. Let's see what we can come up with. Francia shared Mage Weave MMU. Cargo test. Release. This is going to be insane. Mod testing. We're going to make a, a function. I don't know. Do we even have to do it in May 2 Do, do. I think what I want to do is we're going to make a, a pub struct mage weave MMU diff. A differencing representation of memory. Is this similar to Thomas debugging from GeoHot? I, I actually can't say. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember what he implemented i know he like did a hypervisor thing i know he had like some tracing sort of stuff um but i don't remember what he did so i can't really speak to that well enough i would hazard to say no it's probably much different diffs vec of vec And then this will be a pub. Uh, this will be a struct diff virtual address a page which has changed new page contents uh, contents u eight four thousand ninety six. This will have a vector of vector of diffs. I think this is actually going to have a vector of like tuples. Um, no, it'll have a vector vector of diffs. We'll impl mage weave me diff uh, function new mute, uh, self create create a new difference mage weave uh, Okay. Okay, we're going to return a self, which will have diffs. Obviously, that's just going to be vec new. No diffs. And then we're going to need, like, original file or something. I'm trying to think if I want to make it file based or if I want to make it memory based. I think I have to make it file based. Merge file, this is going to be a mage weave MMU uh, file. Original file we are based off of. Uh, changes, uh, sets of changes. So like mage weave MMU files are already differencing, but they're differencing against other files. I mean, maybe I could change, I could maybe modify the mage weave MMU files. Uh, I'm trying to figure out like roughly what I want the API usage to be like. And I, it's just really hard to come up with on the spot. I'll have original file that it's based off of. That in itself can be differencing, but this is meant to be like explicitly in memory, single file differencing. Oh shit, yeah, we can do some nutty things with this. Okay, there's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some crazy stuff that we can implement here. 
basically we'll be able to keep track of like all the pages which have modified which then will allow us to have um we'll be able to go back to memory accesses so we'll be able to say like go to the most recent memory access of this address if we do this right uh let me delete this shit let me um make sure everything works in its current state I need to commit this before we uh, hop down this this journey. Okay. Diff file. Yep, that was just like an example. Auto keyframe. This is gonna be set to false. So currents, we need to make sure that this is able to create the, the keyframe it is. Calc stepped. This should work. Uh, fuzz with all. I just want to make sure a couple crashes go through and everything works fine. Yep, we got crashes. File names look good. Those are known crashes, so that looks sane. We're going to spin up the server, make sure that the server side of things still works. Uh, that's fine. Um, RM calc stepped coverage star. Bring those online. Okay, they connected in. Coverage is coming in. That looks good. All the fuzzers are online. We got crashes coming in. Okay, I think this is good get status uh one of these windows oh we don't have one open anymore oh this one get st oops get status get diff see what we've changed get log get commit am everything seems to be working well I just got to get that shit shipped up before I end up uh, completely destroying everything that we have. So now I'm going to make... Mage Weep MMU files are going to be what I think holds the diffs once they're serialized out. But... Mage Weep MMU diff. There's going to be an original file, which it's going to be forked from. So this is going to basically say, like, this is the basis for all of these diffs. We're going to have sets of changes. Uh, set keyframe from snapshot. Let's make sure all this stuff looks good. Uh, that updates the last keyframe and last keyframe path, which is required. Because the file stem... Writes the mem file in the state file. Okay, that looks good. Uh, save keyframe mem. Okay. So we're able to save keyframes very quickly in memory now. I don't know. Maybe I just log these. This is how they kind of reference each other. I could... I could maybe make some, like, bogus file names. Because I think this, this path... When I do a save, oh, it does actually take a path. I think I want to change this to take a, like a, I think I might need to make it take a string rather than a path. And then I could construct artificial names, kind of hack it together. 
the diffs have to, yeah, it's just still not efficient. Dude, I have no idea. Original file that we're based off of. I don't even know if we want that. Retrieve MMU diff. This will keep track of all of the changes that were made to a major MMU. So this will do, this will have sets of changes. We're gonna create a new major MMU diff, libtko, we're gonna give access, or we're gonna get major MMU diff. And then we're going to want to do uh, Franzia persist. Uh, Mage weave MMU diff. Uh, differencing Mage weave MMU. Uh, we can just impl default on this. I think we can always maintain that this has a default implementation. So this is the mage weave MMU. Uh, current MMU diffs. And then this will impl a clear, or uh, pub fn clear, mute self. So reset the uh, diff state self dot diffs dot clear and then in load keyframe kind of towards the end we're just gonna do a, a self dot persist dot mage weave mmu diff dot clear reset the differencing mmu. So when you load keyframes right now, they'll always reload to the original state. So now, okay, so this should build, this should work. This should be fine. Yeah. Okay, so now in our last automatic keyframe, what we'll do here is we'll do self dot whatever we called that field, uh, mage weave MMU diff dot update. We're gonna give this uh, an I count, and then we have to give this access to the MMU. Let MMU is equal to self dot mage, uh, self.unix dot mmmu actually mage weave mmu we're gonna have to have a way of getting this we're just gonna comment this out we're gonna get this plumbed through basically I need to get access to the mage weave mmu all the way from the unix state uh, shared unix mu impl unix state this will have a VM. And I don't think I have a way of accessing the VM. Oh, I do. Dot VM mute on Unix. Fantastic. And those are public. So VM mute uh, self dot Unix dot VM mute. Good. Okay. Shared. Uh, fake VM source lib. Uh, mage weave. MU diff. No, 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 no. This has mage weave MMU. And I'll just add pub fn memory mute. Mute self. Mage weave mmu u8 mute 
self dot mage weave and you actually I think just memory get access to the backing memory for this VM the immutable reference to mage weave MMU okay and then this is going to be dot memory mute and now we have access to the mage weave MMU Fantastic. So now we can do mage weave MMU diff dot update MMU. And then this will take pub fn update mute mute self and then immutable reference to uh, MMU. Um, updates and then we'll take an I count uh, U64. Updates the differencing ah. uh, logs all of the pages which were modified since the last update. Then here we're going to do self or er, let diffs is equal to ah. Uh, yeah, we need to make a copy of all these pages. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Uh, What's access handler mute? Okay. We're just gonna do this. We effectively wanna do the same stuff as restore uh, for update. We're gonna go through all of the dirty pages. We're gonna get access to the dirty page and then we can make uh, let mute diff is equal to vec new. And then here we can do we don't need to get the original stuff or demote. So we'll go through all of the dirty pages. And then we'll get access to let mute, uh, actually diff.push. Diff.push diff vatter contents current dot try into. I don't know if I have try into for four Ks. I think I'll have to make a temporary. Yep. Let me temp is equal to uh, OU8 4006 temp copy from slice of current uh, create a copy of the page. We're going to whack that in here update that this page has been changed and store the current state and then oops uh, reset the list of dirty pages uh, clear the list of dirty pages and I should have a diff here print diff contains differences diff.len this should contain all of the pages that have changed since the last reset uh, self.backing uh, this is going to be mmu.backing uh, the type of that Uh, persist. Okay. Uh, we'll put this here, and then we gotta put it back in auto keyframe mode. And now we'll get to see, so here are the page differences 
uh, while we are running, which is fantastic. Okay, and then all we have to do is log those and then tag them with an I count. So we'll do uh, um, association with uh, map of I counts to map of I counts to the index in the diffs of that state. I count map. This will be a, ha a B tree map actually of U64s to U sizes. So we'll get the let IDX is equal to diff.len. Diff. Uh, no, this is self.diffs.len. Self.diffs.push IDX. Uh, push diff. Save the difference. And then update mapping of I count to diff log. Self dot I count map dot insert I count IDX. And then we'll assert that this is none. Basically make sure that we're not overwriting an entry, which should never happen. And further, I think we want to um, last I count u size last observed I count option. So if let sum last I count equals last I uh, self last I count. I'm just gonna do this up at the top actually. Before we even create the vector, yeah, assert that the last I count, or that the current I count is greater than that. Uh, diff did not go forward in time. Okay, and then here we'll do self.last I count is equal to sum I count. Uh, make sure everything is in sequence. And then this will be uh, allocate vector to hold diffs. Okay. Nice. So that's just doing the stuff behind the scenes. That's keeping track of, at every I count, the state that pages were in. Okay. Uh. Okay. I don't know, like, uh, I almost want, like, some, like, actual keyframes in here such that I don't have to go through the whole diff log every time I apply diffs. I also am going to have to track these, uh, the memory states. How do I serialize that out? Uh, save. Save keyframe. That will serialize the Unix state. I almost want that to not serialize the memory state. Uh, this gives me a log of all the diffs. I need to also save the Unix state that needs to be serialized in here along with those diffs. Um, but once I do that, am I close? At that point, I would have a list of all of the changes to 
files and then I could load. Um, hmm. Hmm. I think what I want to do is I want to get rid of this, uh, I don't want this to return the serialized Unix state anymore. And that means I don't have to give it a path. I don't think. Let me check. Shared Unix state source lib. Serialize this. Don't have to return this. Last keyframe we don't have to have anymore. Here, that takes last keyframe which we don't need. E shared fake VM source. Okay. Good. Doesn't need to return this. We just don't need to do that at all. Okay, path not using Unix MU. Uh, Unix. Okay. Uh, no mem state. Yep. Mem state not found. Yeah, so this is now going to be obtainable through a direct call to save. Okay. I'm just going to undo because I want this. Oops. Uh, last KFN. Last KFN is equal to this. Get the last keyframe name. And then here we should be able to self dot unix dot vm mute dot memory mute dot save. Last KFN. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can serialize. Um, let's do let's do uh serialize first. This is gonna return this. It's going to serialize the Unix state or serialize the Francia state for a VM, Unix, all this stuff. And then here we'll return serialized buff. And then in save keyframe, this will grab state file is gonna be self.serialize. And then we're gonna get the let mem state or mem file is equal to this okay serialize the uh franzia state serialize the memory state fantastic so we should be able to do calc this will take the snapshot everything's good agent right fell success Calc stepped. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a sign that we broke it.
Solves that serialize. Serialize. Gonna do all this shit. At the end, we're gonna do self Unix VM mute. Save last KFN. Okay. Print last KFN is this. Last KFN is calc.mem. That's fine. We're going to send that off. That's going to cause save to happen. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucked because this is... Uh, this stuff is clearing those diffs. Those dirty diffs. This should work now. Okay. Yep. Everything's good. Okay. So, if we set auto keyframe to true, we should now be able to do calc stepped. Okay. So, now what we can do is in our mage we've MMU diff. I can have the diffs per hmm. So I also want to include the state file. So this will also have the state file. It's just a vec view eight. Um this is gonna be in here. Okay, that has. All right. Save keyframe. Then we have serialized to serialize Franzia. Uh, in fact, that doesn't need to be mutable at all anymore, I don't think. Let's see. Nope. 277. That's in the other one. Okay. So this will also have to take in a state. The Franzia state, vec u8. And we'll push diff, comma, state. Awesome. 3272. This will take in a. What will this take in? Self to serialize. We might have to put that on an, on another line. Yeah. Let state is equal to this. Shit. Oh. Unix. Does this need to be mutable? I don't think so. We'll see if that complains. And then VM mute. Yeah, we don't we need VM mute anymore. Just VM should should do. Obviously this is gonna fail at the next stage. Wait, what? Uh oh, serialize. Shared fake VM, and then this shouldn't need to be mutable. Oh, uh, three, two, seven, one. That did we do it? Nice. Okay, so now that is updating all of these differences, and this has all the diffs that we need. 
Um, so, okay. So now I'm keeping track of the, the states of everything, every 1 million instructions or whatever, whatever count we want to do. Uh, and now what we want to do is uh, restore those. So I think what I want to do is self.load keyframe. Well, I need a way of causing a keyframe and an icon to get loaded. I really need a way to break into the the debugger pretty bad to see what this data actually um here's what I can do I can do print vm state at instruction count we'll do like 12 is here we'll do rip at this is rip at this is equal to uh O eighteen x, and we'll just do self dot vm or self dot regs dot program counter, and i count. Okay, so as program execution occurs. We will have the different program counters at these points. And then what I want to do is at some point, I want to revert. So I think I'm just going to hard code it. It should be pretty much deterministic. So I can say uh, if, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here. Ah, uh, fuck. Load keyframe. That takes a state file. It deserializes it kind of manually. Load keyframe. Oh, my God. This is going to be hard. Consume. That has the deserialization. What is this doing? Pub fn deserialize. Uh, restores state from a serialized state. Mute self. I think basically we can take everything here. There's gonna be a lot of variables we probably don't have here. Oh, not too many. Uh, keyframe name, instars, exec. We can compute that here. Honestly, like all this stuff too. All we want load keyframe to do is connect to the network, do that stuff, nice. All this stuff, I think we can move here. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Path. Uh, this still belongs here. Serialize buff keyframe name. There's no result. Beautiful. Let's 
state file. Serialize uh, pointer is equal to a state file. Okay, 2516. Keyframe name. We'll just pass that in. Okay. Now this should fail pretty catastrophically. It'll probably even crash, to be honest. Yep, couldn't load ROM image, no surprise. So now we're gonna do, uh, at the end of this function, we're gonna do self.deserialize. This callback, we're actually gonna put the load keyframe callback in the deserialize routine. Then he, oh, we had it there. Uh, then he, this will do deserialize. And we should have keyframe name and serialize buff. Serialize buff is the state file. Uh, load everything from the keyframe. Okay, and this. This might work. Nice. Okay, so now we can deserialize from a state file. So what I should be able to do is if we look, if we kind of follow this log, what I should be able to do is grab one of these So I'll say, if I count is equal to this, print reverting state. And then we'll grab an earlier I count. We'll just grab like this one. Uh, let revert to equals this. Obviously, we're not actually going to revert yet. I'm just uh, running this. Okay, so on that case, it's going to want to revert state. And then in this case, um, pub fn apply mute stick self applies a, a specific I count state to memory. I count u64 uh, if self dot uh, asserts. Actually, we can just do um, let uh, diff entry is equal to. And I don't know if I want to do the vector or not. It's hard to say like how I want to uh, lay this out in memory yet. Um, self dot I count map. I count. So we're going to get access to this, get access to the corresponding diff entry. Um, then what we're going to want to do is a self.load keyframe none. Reset uh, to original memory state. And then get the diff entry. Okay. So this should cause us to kind of loop all the way back to the start. Uh, integer underflow when on auto keyframing. Uh, load keyframe. Are we not resetting that here? Last time I had a keyframe is none. It should be getting invoked. Uh, print. We can print. Uh, we're going to panic here. P 
panic all done with test. Uh, Rip is at this, so what we should see is that we'll event we'll get the original RIP value. Okay, at reverting state. Uh, rip at this. So if you look at this, this should be where we started executing. Uh, well, this is, yeah. Yeah, this will be the first instruction. Okay, perfect. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to do self dot uh, actually major MMU diff dot apply I count, which we're going to do this. Son of a bitch. Apply I count that. So actually, we're going to take this one and we're just going to go back. Uh, this is the millions. We're going to go back just two, two million instructions, just so it's uh, near on screen. So we're executing, everything's good, reverting state, and then obviously RIP is not what it is supposed to be. Um, and so what we're going to do here, we're going to get the diff entry. I think what we're going to do is we're going to return out the um, let new state is equal to this. And then we're going to do self dot deserialize uh, keyframe name asdf state file new state okay and then this function is going to return a slice of u8s and this will grab diff entry dot one which is that vector uh oh yeah yeah, yeah. let diff entry so this will get the that and we'll do self dot diffs diff entry. Now we can do dot one. Okay. Ah oh, yeah 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 yeah. Borrowed as immutable. I mean we can temporarily clone it. We'll do optimization on this code later. We're just gonna do a clone for now. Uh, dot one should be good on lifetimes. Yep. Index out of bounds. Index is forty six on diffs. self.diffs.push Oh, um we got to do this prior. Load the keyframe, deserialize. Okay, restoring state, uh reverting state. Okay, that is not right. Serialize, pass that in state. This will take that state. Oh, uh, we need to do a sync. Oh yeah, that is in memory. Okay, that's uh, that's actually really good. So, um, holy shit, I think this is gonna work. So. This deserialize routine should end up going through, and if the guest state is sum, it will sync box. So that's exactly what you want. And I guess we don't want to apply yet. So we want to load keyframe. But we don't want the MMU diff to get cleared. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it not uh, clear the MMU diff temporarily. It'll be a pretty obvious memory leak if if we screw that up. So we'll uh, we'll recognize that pretty fast. 
Okay, so uh, this is printing the wrong PC value because it's restoring PC from the box memory state, and the memory state has not been reset. Um, so here we'll get the, the new state is equal to this, and then we're going to apply these diffs. And this is why we store it in, in a vector instead of an array. So we're going to do for uh, diff idx is that. For this in 0 dot dot diff idx, I think we want inclusive here. Uh, I'm going to go through the pages. So we're going to go. So the state file is is complete. That that is not a differencing file yet. That's something that we'll maybe eventually change and improve. Uh, but for now, we're going to go through and do for the diff in self dot diffs uh, I I. So that will get up to an inclusive, which is good. Uh, diff entry we actually can do down here. Yeah, uh, return, turn out the state. And then this will be apply all memory diffs. And we could actually make this a lot smarter potentially if we skip page, uh, writing over pages twice. But for now, vec diff okay for diff in this dot zero uh actually for diff and then the state is the last thing which we don't care about print diff is this and we'll print the address diff dot adder uh not finding the scope blah 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 diff index okay yep not an iterator oh you know what this is actually uh, dot zero dot iter that's what we want this should be correct beautiful oh well that one that one coincidentally had a crash, diffing state. Okay, these are all the pages that have been modified. Let's double check. I'm curious how big this list is gonna be. Okay, not too big. Okay, and now we're gonna do uh, unsave. Let's slice. So we're gonna get a, a slice to the current memory at that virtual address. Um, Standard mem, uh, standard slice from raw parts mute, diff.vatter as mute u8. And then 4096. So we're going to get access to that page. So we'll do sliced.copy from slice. of diff dot contents. Okay, reverting state. Huh. Go through, apply all the diffs in memory. For diff and self dot diffs. I zero iter. Slice it up. We might need to uh, fault that page in as well. Or at least m protect that page as as rewritable. Rip at this is this. Uh, 
I mean, what if I do this? Ox four one four thousand ninety six. I just want to. I want to see if this clobbers the shit out of memory. This should just like hard hard fail, hard crash, derefing four ones. No. Blah blah. blah. Oh, these fuzz cases are killing me. Okay, averting state. Is this right not occurring? That. Calling this. Oh, is this resetting? Deserialize. Do, 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 do. Yeah, where's this resetting memory? Vote callbacks, shared mem. Is this shouldn't be resetting memory anymore? Wait, how is this? When we deserialize That memory backing deserialize everything. How is the how is the memory actually even restoring right now? Less keyframe, much less cache. Oh, it's in fake VM. We're doing a. Uh, deserialize in fake VM. We're doing a decommit. Uh, decommit is true. I think I actually just want to get rid of this. And I want this to not... Ah, shit. What if I have this set to uh, diff keyframe? If it's false, let's just temporarily do this. Do nothing. And this is now behaving more as like a restore memory. Oops. Come on. Averting state. Filter in command buffer. Oh, that's because inject is getting called. That makes sense because we're in a different memory state. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, so we want this to be true. We want that to be true. And then what we want to do is... Uh, so this is going to be wrong. But you won't get the panic with trying to write in memory, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. So here what I want to do is deserialize. And then this will take in maybe an I count. So where we call it in load keyframe, we'll just pass it a none which will basically be restore the keyframe to its original state. And then this other mode is going to be restore the keyframe and apply diffs. So this is going to be, uh, we do want that to be do nothing. I count is none. If it's none, then we'll uh, do all that. So we'll, Actually, we want to decommit. No. We don't want to decommit. We don't want to change. Ah. Uh, actually, I don't think we want to do nothing. We want the memory restore, which will reset everything back. 
to its original state. So we'll say if I count is none, uh, then in this case it's going to restore uh, deserialize here. We're just going to say sum. Uh, it's not actually using the I count field yet. Driving it from the outside. Okay, come on. This is probably gonna, yeah, reverting state, good. Okay, so that's gonna reset everything. And then we want to apply this. Um, yeah, I think I actually want to move the, I do think I want this to do nothing. We're going to call this unsafe at this point. Um, this does not modify the memory state. I'm going to go to I count. So then here, we're not going to pass anything in. In this case, it's not actually going to restore anything. Uh, deserialize a fake VM from output. Turn some more bytes to deserialize. This does not reset memory states. That is on you. Do I need to make this unsafe then? What's up, Harusame HS? Thank you for following. Not reset memory states, that's on you. That's fine. Okay, you shared Unix. Actually, SP shared Unix MU. And we'll do. Diff keyframe, we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of it as an argument here. Deserialize a Franti VM from output. Yep. And safe. And then load keyframe. Where are we at? Load keyframe. When I do an unsafe deserialize, and then we'll do self.vmmute.mmu. Uh, dot vmute memory mute dot uh, revert restore. What do I call it? So we have a restore and we have a decommit. So we'll do a decommit. Boom. Oh. Sometimes the icons get skewed. And then we'll miss our hard coded shitty icon. Okay, reverting state. Uh, TKO doesn't match what box reported. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I think. So deserialize does not handle memory at all. Yep, 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 yep. So then down at the end, uh, update the internal coverage version. Okay. Apply diff if some I count is equal to I count. So then here we can do, we should be able to do this.
we need to get the state file. That's fine. State is passed in. Actually, if this is optional, state file. Okay, so if there's an I count, then we're going to get let state file is equal to this, else state file dot unwrap. Um, dot apply I count. That will do all of those diffs, load this, which we'll then use instead. And then load keyframe, um, pub fn jump I count. Mute self, I count. Jump backwards in time to a specific I count. And then this is going to call self.deserialize. ASDF. None some I count. And I guess the keyframe name. Okay. So this we can do self dot jump I count this jump backwards in time. And this that'll apply Okay. Oops. Okay. Ah, uh, semi. Yep. What? Expected an option, found a U64. 2461. Expected option, option U64. Found an option U64. What? What? Oh, if let. Woof. Okay, yep, they don't have compatible arms. And then 2685, we're having issues too. 2685, this is going to be a sum. And a none. And deserialize. 2461. Uh. Expected a vector. Yep, found a U8. If I do this, we're going to have issues with lifetimes. So let, I can just make a dummy is equal to none. Dummy equals sum this. Then I can do dummy dot as ref. Unwrap. Okay. Diff did not go forward in time. Okay. Process. Oh yeah, yeah. That didn't make it to the to the reset. That one didn't either. I might have to. I'm gonna set a lower I count. I'm gonna set this. If it's this, then we're gonna jump back. Uh, we'll jump back to seven.
Okay. TKO version does not match what Box reported when trying to sync. Uh, how could that happen? Uh, we apply diffs for all the pages that have changed, but we don't undo things for things that haven't. Uh, aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I think I do want the reset in this case. I think I want to do self dot unix dot vm mute dot memory mute. If I do decommit, this should crash because this means we'll. No, decommit might be fine actually. Okay. What if I, if I did this? Um, they'll look this up. This will decommit memory. We'll then fill in the pages with what we need. Decommit memory. Apply these diffs, and the diff will return. Is it uh, decommit? Ooh, actually, yeah, it just decommits the whole thing in a single swoop, right? Yeah. So that will decommit everything there. Nice. Which then means we'll have no pages mapped in. We're then going to apply the diff. Load those. Okay, let's see if our Oh, shit. Oh, we are calling update. Okay. So we call update. That is making copy the page. So we're going to get update. Get the current thing, copy it in attempt, push that into temp. Oh, it's because we're doing four ones. Because we were testing that earlier. Sliced. This is it. Oh, not sliced. Uh, diff dot contents. Yeah. And that is a reference. Okay, this might be it. As constate. This might be the one. Uh, did we want to go all the way back here? Oh, did we enter the wrong number? No. 774. We want to go back to 774. So that is resetting to this. Seven four. Isn't that what we're trying to jump to? How would that be different? Revert, and then what I want to see is this. I can't apply, so we'll decommit everything. We'll apply the diffs. Print applying diff to 
X. Like we fixed something because we got we got past the uh, TKO version mismatch. Yep, bunch of shit that we're applying diffs to, and then diffs clone. Okay, down here. Decommit. Okay. Applying diff to this. We'll print the page. And then I'm going to loop. Slice that up. Um, unless we're resetting somewhere, but I don't think so. Jump by account. Load all that state stuff. We don't call decommit from either of those. Do, do. Um. Lower hex, not implement for slice of U8s. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, a little verbose, a little verbose. I'm going to put this in dash at quiet. Okay. Uh, Jesus. Get rid of that. That. That's much better. Okay, windbag attach to TKO, and we'll print uh, DB this, okay, applying diff, 4F2, 45, 34, that looks good, okay. Applying diff. Uh, we'll do if i is equal to diff index. Then we'll loop. This is going to get a little spewy. Uh, actually, we'll put this into here. There's a... There's a chance that maybe that's getting optimized out. Since the compiler maybe doesn't see where the write to that is relevant. Okay, DB of this, F, K, alternating things. Yeah, we don't we don't necessarily know where on that page it differed. So I wonder if it would work if I do this. Let this is equal to format of sliced. If it works with this, it's an optimization issue. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Do, 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 do. Reverting state. Okay, it's still fucked. Um, return out the state. 
Rip is at self dot regs dot program counter. Print doing sync. So that did do a sync. Sync box to VM. All right, the bug's gonna be really obvious. What does Unix deserialize do? Uh, memory. Mem? Oh, this, uh, deserialize, consume. Memory regions, yep. Self stack. Make sure that we get, yep. 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 I don't know, is this getting optimized out? I don't think that can get optimized out. I don't, I don't think the compiler would be allowed to do that. Here I could say, let arrange equals OU8 4096, let mute copy from slice, sliced assert a ridge is equal to sliced yep fine we'll slice it this assertion should fail yeah Okay, if this is not equal, print updated the page. This is just so there's a print. Be a lot. Yep. Uh, DD21E. Is that where this one started? DD21E, okay, so that isn't applying updates. Well, it is. Diffs. Diff index. Diffs. Dirtied pages, copy. Go through all of the dirtied pages. Dirty pages dot clear. I'm gonna get rid of this temporarily. Okay. Okay, that's right now. That is now correct. Dabo. Dabbing on those RIPs. Okay, so why would that, why would making them differential break it? So by clearing dirtied pages, oh, if we clear dirtied pages, I have to do a revert. Yeah, yep, yep, okay, makes sense, everything makes sense, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, bug's so obvious. Um, the issue is we're not, uh, uh, reverting these. If we look at decommit or restore, 
If you look at Restore, Restore is going to go through and it's going to demote the mapping for all the dirtied addresses, which it this has to do. Otherwise, I won't get uh, dirty updates on those pages. This should now work. That's fine. Uh, this is an issue. This is an issue with uh, the stacks. The stacks not uh, valid in there. So what I need to have is there need to be exemptions on the stack. Um, I need to let Mage we I mean, you know where the stack is from Unix, actually from fake VM. Oops, shared libtko. Uh, what is the font? The font is just a uh, uh, 16 point terminal font on Windows. It's just the default font. So SP shared fake VM. Why don't I have up arrow? I don't know. Okay, so uh, probably because I went into that file dialog, the tab complete. So when a MageWeave MMU gets created, um, I want to make a range. Let's see. Stack. Make sure the stack always gets paged in. Where else do I write volatile? Right here, this is when I, this is on a, a reload, okay? And then this is when I establish that stack. Okay, and set RSP. So here I'm gonna wanna have uh, stacks back U size. Um, Actually, just stack. This will be an option of a U size, which will be the virtual address and then a length. So, an optional region of memory, which we need to make sure always is read writable. I guess that means we're not getting diffs on the stack? No, because. Writing to it puts it in the dirty list, but then if we revert, that's fine because it reverts the pages, and then they get re-commit with the previous one by writing the stack to itself. Okay. Uh... Something that's always read writable. And then on decommits, it should be fine because this. I don't know if I want to rely on this to fill it in. Could you make Kelt Crash? You want to see Kelt Crash? It's pretty, it's pretty easy. There's like a million ways. Twitch Fuzz Kelk. Uh, we can go into live repro. I don't, oof. CMD, cargo run, OXOD. Uh, this is attaching, uh, Kelk, and it's gonna, oh, I, I actually have this torn down right now. I think we repurposed it for some shit, for some, like, grooming. Uh, let's take a look at... Here, primary window attach, command, going to send commands, should be good. Go, boop, there you go, there's a crash in Kelt. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's surprisingly not too difficult. 
There you go. There's your kelp trash for you. Okay. Let's see. Reverting state. Do I want a blacklist? I, I think I have to have Mage Weave MMU. No. I guess this guy is, is resetting the stack down here. This is in Deserialize on Fake VM. So Fake VM Deserializing. Shit. I'm actually surprised that stack isn't getting set to executable. Deserialized from Unix, which will cause fake VM to get deserialized, which will cause us to read our stack and write it back out. We should never be using the Unix stack. Uh, it's a it's a type confusion bug. There's a type confusion and an uninitialized memory use and uh, uh, we don't know if it's a double free. It's a double free or a use after free. So there are a couple different bugs in there actually. We've got probably like seven or eight unique bugs. I don't know, maybe a twelve or thirteen if you include null DRFs. Um, get the state file. We're going to apply this. Let's, uh, let's see if we can warm up the stack. Now let's get rid of the stack. Oops. Okay, and that's crashing like right away. Why would that be crashing? Okay, mage weave. This became an issue when we started demoting the mappings here. And that's because, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we will need to tell where that stack is. So stack option u size u size optional region of memory to never uh mark as read only uh pub fn set stack Mute self, uh, pub unsafe, sets a region of memory to always keep paged in as RW. Stack option U size, U size. Self dot stack is equal to stack. Okay, then here, uh, if we add a stack, we also want to do self dot, uh, self dot memory dot set stack stack and size. Set the stack in the mage weave MU. It's gonna be unsafe as shit. Option. Or, oops. Some. This. Okay, that will set the stack. Let's, uh, let's get this all paged in.
Okay. And then here, we have to warm up the stack on Deserialize. And basically... In this case, we want to do state file unwrap. Do we just decommit it? Yeah. Decommit memory. Okay, decommit memory. Apply the diff. Uh, when we decommit memory, We'll decommit it and then we'll warm up the stack. If let's um ooh set stack stack size. That should be good. Uh, if let some stack is equal to self dot stack, then we're gonna go through uh, if let some stack and then size we'll do stack dot dot stack dot uh this and that straddle the page okay so let stack is equal to or here we'll make sure we'll, we'll make sure that the stack is always aligned um Stack plus size dot step by 4096. And I'm just going to just going to read one byte and write one byte to the address there. Okay, make sure the stack gets paged back in. Okay. Uh, where's this issue now? 127. For offset in this. Okay, so here we're going to assert. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pub unsafe fn page in stack. Mute self. Make sure that the stack is paged in as rwx this will take this code self dot page in stack page the stack in okay here eight this Stack, stack plus size, step by 4096. We're just gonna, we're gonna read a single byte and then we're gonna write out that byte. And so here we'll do self.page in stack. Oops. And then if let some stack, if let some base size equals stack. Assert base dot len or base and oxffff is zero. Uh, stack was not for kilobyte aligned. I guess that I might actually not know that whether or not it's 4k aligned. Um, we can actually just uh, perform the the change here. If let some stack base size, uh, we can just align it ourselves. So we can do stack uh, base is equal to base uh, and not OXFFF. So four kilobyte align down the base. And then this will be uh, four kilobyte align up the size. Or we can just compute the end. Let end is equal to the base plus the size, and we'll do this, minus one, assert size greater than zero, invalid size for set, 
back. Okay, we compute the ending address, and then we compute the starting address. And then we're gonna line up the ending address. This is gonna be equal to uh, end plus OXFFF and not OXFFF. So we, t we get the We get the ending byte of the stack region, and then we align that ending byte up. And yeah, that should be good. So if we, for example, if we set this as the base and OX1 as the size, which is like worst case scenario, end will be equal to OX1, which if we page align that up, it'll become 2K. Sweet. Base and uh, so tuple is base adder and adder. And we'll put a square bracket here. So it's obvious that it's not uh, actually Yeah, we're doing it in kind of a weird way. This is fine. Uh, tuple is base, address, and address. Inclusive. Okay, we don't actually need to align this up. We can just compute the end address, and then we'll set that stack is equal to uh, if it's not, then self.stack if it's none. Self.stack is equal to base, which has been aligned down, which is good. And then we have end, which will align, or we don't have to necessarily align that up, because even if it's one byte further, this only gets distance away. And then as long as we make it inclusive, we're fine. Because if end was the first byte of a page, yeah, we're just going to make it inclusive. So set the stack range. Then we're going to call page and stack. And page and stack is going to get stack and end. And then we can do a dot dot equals end. Because we want to include the end address and we go through all of the 4K pages, stack is aligned, and then if end ends exactly on a page, we still go through it. If end is a page plus one, we just skip it. So base plus size minus one. And here I can even do dot checked, add size minus one dot unwrap. Okay, so decommit. We'll call page and stack, and page and stack will get the start and the end address of the stack if there is one. It will go through all of the bytes in the stack, 4K aligned, and just write, read and write the single byte in place. Uh, set stack. Yep. So page in the stack, so that's in decommit, and then in restore. We'll also want to page in the stack, so set read only. Where is this used? So here, this is our uh, new thing that we wrote. And we don't have to do that every iteration. We can just do it here. Uh, make sure the stack stays paged in. Same with the set read only. If that was in a loop, uh, yeah. Here we'll uh, make sure the stack gets paged in. Okay, so anywhere we do set read only, we want to page in the stack. Anywhere that we do that, page in the stack. Okay, and then anywhere that we do a decommit, we're going to want to page in the stack as well. Looks good. Missing stack, 116. 
By default, no stack. It's up to you to create one. Uh, 342. Not found on Mage Weave MMU diff. Yup. Yup. Uh, we should just be able to do this on MMU. Page that shit in. Unsafe. And then in one other spot that we do it. Also needs to be unsafe. Okay. Okay, 339 in this file. This doesn't like it. I'm going to pass stack as U size. And are you passing in the size of the stack? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Tuple is stack base size in bytes. Okay, unsafe, uh, unnecessary unsafe at 129. Yep. Okay, 286, unused. Okay, gone. What's up, Count Lizzie? Thank you for following. Okay, got a little access violation going on. Not a big deal. Actually, it is a big deal. How did that not fix it? Set stack. Huh. Check to add this. Okay. Print set stack. Put some addresses in here. Base end. Should be paging those in. Come on. Nope. Oh, are we not even seeing a print there? Set stack. Add stack. Are we using add stack? Yeah, here. Add an elf. Add a one meg stack, which we'll call add stack, which we'll call set stack. Setting stack? Question mark? Oh, is it crashing even before then? No, it shouldn't. Actually, that R12, yeah, so that is a custom stack, vprot, rsp, no access, shit, how are we not setting a stack there, run. If it hasn't run, add a stack. Surely we're adding a stack. Oh, um. Why, why am I even doing that here? I guess you can access the VM, add a stack. Problem is I don't know where the stack is in the Mage Weave MMU. Uh, Cause that has this has actually been done in the keyframe since we're looking at a memory snapshot. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's really hard to work in this environment. Like, the state space is so complex. Memory does and doesn't exist at the same time. All right, let's see, let's see what we can do. So this is gonna add a stack. Um, does this have knowledge of where the stack is? Yeah. 
Yeah, it does. Uh, okay, so this has this has knowledge of the stack. Add stack. Okay. So that will call set stack, but we actually are going to change this a little bit. We're gonna do uh, set the stack and make we've MMU. And then let stack is equal to pub fn get stack self uh, stack. It's just a range, which should just be a beginning and an end. Get stack will return a u size and a u size gets the base and size of the stack. Here we'll do self.stack. Dot dot um, map. Self.stack.map. Um, what are we gonna do this for? X. Then we're going to do x dot start x dot end minus x dot start plus one. Okay, stack. Yep, not found in here. That makes sense. So this will be stealth dot unix dot vm mute dot memory mute dot set stack. We're gonna get access to the stack, uh, which will be from self dot unix dot get stack dot expect. Uh, whoa, no stack allocated for fake VM. That should never happen, so an unwrap is fine there. Get the stack for the VM. Then we're gonna write that shit in. Set the stack to stack. Okay, get stack. Uh, not found on Unix state. This is on VM. Unnecessary unsafe block. Is this whole thing unsafe? Yeah, it is. Oops, put a little semi in there. So we're gonna get access to the stack. We're gonna find where the stack is and then we're gonna tell Mage we've MMU where it is. Okay. Setting stack, question mark. Setting stack to this range. Set stack there to there. And then uh, yeah, I think I want to write this in every time. Self dot page and stack. Oops, already on safe. Yep. Oh, we do that down there. Okay. How is that not getting paged in then? Set stack in this range. Let's see uh, the address that we're faulting on. Uh, DB RSP uh, 1E61. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's 1D and then 1E61 FFF. We are in that range. So for some reason that page is not getting paged in. We're gonna print Paging in x adder dotted equals end self stack. Hey Maruchan, Mar Maruchan Dio. <laughs> Sorry if I completely butchered that. RSP. Okay. 
Oh, are we not seeing the page in prints? Weren't we seeing a set stack print? Self to sec is that. Whoa. Whoa, big bugs. Mistakes were made. Fixed. All right, we're good now. We did it. Yeah, bar mute error. Uh, access handler mute. Uh, what is this doing? Handle exception. Access handler. Update. Uh, actually, what do I want to do here? I want the major MU. Access handler mute. That's going to go in here. Um, I should be able to do this. This should get called when we set stack. And then here, we're going to set a stack. Uh, that should page in everything here. What crazy thing are you doing? We're writing a, um, a harness for fuzzing. And effectively, it allows us to... Um, it allow like... The goal is that we can run a VM deterministically and we can move forward and backwards in time. So right now we're trying to implement time travel uh, support for a VM. So if you were to find a crash in an application running in the VM, you could go backwards in time to actually um, to see what state, is, state it was in. And we have that implemented. Everything worked. Uh, works, but you have to kind of manually say like, okay, I want to save this state. I want to save this state, and it allows you to jump to states that you explicitly saved. What we're trying to do now is we want to automate it entirely, so uh, such that the such that these uh, memory states are saved kind of automatically. Okay, paging in that rip is at this. Honestly, that looks fine. Then it gets paged out. That shouldn't be possible. Where are we? Where are we at? Context switch. But yeah, effectively we've like implemented our own operating system in userland. We have like kind of this full control of like these memory states, and we have like. Uh, fake context switching and, and a bunch of pretty crazy shit going on here. DBRSP. Um, we're always setting that stack. Oh, 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 We got to do this before every entry in the VM. Okay, run the Unix VM. Set up the stack, make sure it's paged in. This might actually really hurt perf. Okay, all done with tests, looks good. Uh, we can actually put this back up here and then here we will need to put this at uh, all the places. Okay, fixed, fixed, fixed. Okay, this should now work. And we only page in that stack the first time, and then from that point on, we just always make sure that we never decommit it. Okay, this was giving recursion issues. We're in update. I see. I think the issue here is, oh, weird. So I can't, I can't page those in. 
Uh, I, I can't page in that stack from that location. God damn, that's this is tough. Um. Okay, I think we're gonna go a slightly different way. Instead of calling page and stack, uh, well, we have to do it there. But here, we were just being lazy. Okay, so page and stack, set stack. Um, restore. Yeah, we actually can't call page in stack in this. That's actually the only issue. Page in stack cannot be called when we are inside of a, a fault handler. So while we're in an access handler, we cannot page in the stack. I think I can just do it outside. Uh, page and stack, and then I should be able to just do an unsafe self dot page and stack here. Do, 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 do. Oh, th thank you, thank you for being the the manually typed out hydration bot. I will re remember to drink some water. We're going to get real hydrated here. <sighs> okay. So everywhere that we did page and stack, uh, so here we can page in stack after a restore, and then here we're going to page in the stack after a decommit. Uh, boop. Boop. And then we'll do a decommit stack way at the end in our own shit uh, set read only. Demote the mapping, access handler, brrrp. decommit the stack. I commit the stack. I typo that somewhere. I feel like I typoed that page and stack. Okay. Good. Pay, co uh, commit the stack. All right. Not found on that. Yep. MMU. <sighs> nice. Art. Look at that. So we were able to jump back to a previous point in time associated with the keyframe. Uh, fan fucking tastic. If I do calc, does this still work? Agent right file success. Good. Okay, now what I need to do is uh, we can put these I counts in here. Beautiful. And would y'all mind if I turn on some music? I don't know if you enjoy hearing the same music that I have on. <clears throat> sometimes sometimes I get stuck singing along to shit. And it's kind of weird to, to hum to things that people have no context for. Uh, current MMU diffs. Uh, okay, current MMU diffs, that is good. MMU diffs, uh, we currently don't have getting reset. Uh, okay, load keyframe. Okay, and then we have the other one, which is jump I count. So then jump I count. Um, ooh, 
Okay, uh... Do you have eye count breakpoints in... Live KD? I think in Crash Handler we set an eye count breakpoint, which we then used to break into Live KD. We're gonna need to do something similar here, which is gonna be tough because we don't have access to Live KD. So, jump eye count. Keyframe name. Uh, none. We're gonna make this an option. Keyframe name. Uh, if let some keyframe name is equal to keyframe name. Okay. Load keyframe will always pass in. Load keyframe will always pass in a keyframe name. Good. Okay. This does not need to pass it in. So that should work. Uh, 2693. I'm going to pass this in. We kind of overloading this function a little bit. Could definitely polish that up slightly. Okay. Uh, calc stepped, failed to write in the command buffer. Okay. So what's going on here is uh, these updates are killing us. Uh, when we do an update, that's hijacking the diff that will be used. Okay, so. Auto keyframe. Okay. That makes sense. Um. Save. When we go to actually save. Do we not call save directly? Save. Right? Yeah, right here. What, what did I have typed in? FN save, yep. Okay, so here we're gonna serialize that memory state out. We're gonna give it the last keyframe name. And then we're optionally going to give it, or not optionally, we're gonna give it uh, self.mageweave mmu diff. And then mageweave mmu diff this is going to contain um, all dirtied. This will be a B tree, uh, just a hash set. It's actually fine here. List of all pages which have been dirtied. And then here we're gonna do, uh, whenever we Whenever we undirty a page, we want to update that that is actually dirty. So here what we can do is we can do self dot all dirtied dot update. Um, so this is a list of all pages which have been dirtied during the entire existence of this mage we've MU diff. Okay, so then we're just gonna, uh, are both of these hash sets, I think dirtied pages is a vector. No, it's a B tree map. Okay, we're using B trees in the here. B tree sets. Uh, we're actually gonna iterate that set anyways here, so we're gonna do, uh, Okay, insert vatter, update that we have observed this page to be dirtied. Nice. Okay, save expected one parameter, uh, mage weave mmu diff, uh, 2137. Uh, mage weave mmu diff. Uh, Mageweave mmu diff 
Uh, this is in persist. Okay, and now we're going to go in and... So we got mage weave, enemy diff. Uh, we're applying updates. That's good. And now uh, save in here needs to take a mage weave, enemy diff. Diff. Uh, this is going to be a mage weave, enemy diff. And then this is going to go through all the dirty pages. And then go through all the dirty pages and flush them out. Uh, so here's out the number of pages. So dirty pages. Dot mm, iter page. We don't use the contents in this case. Um, we need to join both of these sets together. We're about to save a keyframe, which, okay, so let mute, um, this is an expensive operation, so it's fine if we do an allocation here. So let mute uh, dirtied pages is equal to a B tree set. And then dirtied pages dot. Uh, I don't know how to do this for all page and dirty pages. Serialize out the address and then serialize out the contents. Yeah, so what we want to do is hash set. Uh, B tree set, actually. Insert. I want like updates. Union. B tree map. Okay, so we're going to have to do it ourselves. So here we're going to do uh, dirtied uh, uh, fh dot dirtied. Is it really fh? Fault handler. Okay, fh dot dirtied pages. Really? Oh yeah, those aren't Mage Weave MMU. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, here, we're gonna update all that stuff, okay. All dirtied. All dirtied, we're gonna insert the virtual address in FH30, okay, nice. And then when we do a uh, function save, we're gonna do fn dot dirty pages dot iter dot for each x dirty pages dot insert x. Uh, and this is gonna give a key val tuple uh, keys. And then we're gonna grab all of the dirty pages. What do we call it? All under, all dirtied. All dirtied dot iter dot for each. I love how that lines up. That makes me so happy. And then fh dot dirtied pages. All of these become dirtied pages. Uh, reset state of the internal dirty pages. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have an issue in the other direction in a, in a second. Dot extend. Oh, can you do B tree set as uh, or B tree map as a B tree set?
Oh, extend takes an into iterator. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we can do dirty pages dot extend uh, this and this. Maybe not exactly this, but close. Um, and then I'm going to do B tree set. I'm just going to make sure that we get the, we might have to put some dot cloned things in there. Ah, oh, shit. First try. Okay, failed to write into command buffer. Yep, we're gonna start calc. You can probably do a union of sets. Yeah. Okay, calc stepped. This should now work. It does. Okay. So now anything that does fh.dirtiedpages.clear. Um, basically, whenever these dirty pages gets cleared, get cleared, uh, they do in restore, which no one's using right now. In decommit, they get cleared. And then in this, they also get cleared. This is save. And finally, in our own, they get cleared. And we basically need to make sure that the... I think we need to link the mageweave mmu diff uh anytime we clear the anytime we clear those diffs we have to update both because both of them are doing their own record keeping at this point so i think what we're going to have to do is uh we're going to have to make I think mage we've MMU. Um, honestly, do we do the diffs just directly on mage we've MMU? Do we even need the mage we've MMU diff structure? Uh, And then, I guess, so the issue is right now is if, if I save a keyframe, the diffs are now screwed because they won't have the correct dirty pages information any, anymore. And let's make sure I have uh, dirty pages extend from that and that clear the dirty pages. This is kind of tough. Once again, tr trying to figure out uh, the best architecture for this. But I think anytime a save occurs, we have to update that mageweave MMU diff. Uh, I guess maybe we can just do it here. Where else is clearing it? Decommit clears dirty pages, but it doesn't matter. If we're doing a decommit, uh, we're loading a new keyframe. Yeah, if we're doing a decommit, we don't care because we're, we're going backwards in time. If we're doing a restore, it doesn't matter because we're going backwards in time. But this case, it does matter. Uh, so we're going to have to save is going to take an I count. And we're going to do an update. So instead of actually going through these dirty pages, I'm going to do diff dot update and update takes in a uh, mage we've mmu mutably i can comply diff update and now we're kind of like flipping them it's kind of weird uh but it should work just fine so we'll do diff dot update on i count MMU, and then I guess we also need the state. If we're ever doing a save, we should have just made the state. Yeah, we just made the state file. Uh, state evacuate. 
and I guess this we're gonna take this we can re-architect this we're just gonna get it to work first this is a uh, this is complex enough that we need to get it working first before we make decisions about how we want to polish it. Uh, save, take this, send in state file, then we're going to update I count. We're going to take an MMU, and then we're going to take into... Ooh. Okay, we'll th we can throw a T in there. We just got to put a T in here. Not a big deal. Uh, save, expected four parameters. Uh, it also needs an I count where we do save. And I count we can get in self.vm.instructions executed. Okay, 2137. Oh, I count first, then diff. Uh, similar field exists. Instructions executed. Different mutability. Uh, let's see if we can do this. This might be really, really unhappy. Yep, yep. Uh, I count. I feel like there's no fucking way that it's going to let me do this. Holy shit, it's letting me do this. I thought my lifetimes were definitely not going to be correct there. Okay. So, when a keyframe gets saved, it's going to cause the matrix of MMU diffs to get updated. So, that ended up exiting after it saved the keyframe. Um, but... This should save keyframe and then update gets called. And then we no longer even need the access handler at all. I don't, yeah, I don't think we need the access handler at all. Save last keyframe. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can just do this. Okay, dirty pages. We no longer need to. Uh, so here, what I can do is I can assert. Well, we don't know that, but uh, we don't have access to it unless we uh, get access to it. So, update the diffs, consuming all dirtied pages up to this point. Now it means that uh, diff dot update actually has perfect knowledge of. Um, so all of the dirty page consumptions actually end up going through the diffs at this point. So now we no longer have to do a union of those uh, two sets. We can just say uh, dirty pages. And in this case, let dirty pages, we're just going to borrow it out of it just so we have a, a local binding. We're going to do diff dot all dirtied. And we should be able to just serialize this shit out. Uh, we don't need to clear that. Okay. Uh, yep. Get the set of all dirty pages. This is going to uh, embed the parent keyframe name. Uh, expected evacuate. Yeah, ret. We didn't change the serialization format at all, but now we've dramatically kind of changed. All diffs now go through that diff structure, uh, which is good. Calc step, this should work. This means we're resuming execution from here. It now means uh, we have this diff structure it also means that when we save it, we have access to that if we want to serialize out the diff along with the file. Um, loading it up is going to be pain. I think MageWeave MMU diff is actually going to find its way into MageWeave MMU proper. Um, 
So, and it will eventually fall off from here. So here I'm gonna do update uh, auto keyframe. So at this point, auto keyframe auto keyframe only saves performance of not causing updates every single time. So if we do a print here, print updating uh, the diff at this I count. So what we'll see is we'll see this print out a bunch of times uh, currently. So we should see this every million instructions. It will update uh, those diff states. It doesn't look like we've really suffered a performance penalty. Uh, diff did not go forward in time. Uh, that is fine. So the issue there is we need to reset the diff structure. Uh, uh, the major MMU diff on a keyframe load after we have uh, consumed it. Basically on a deserialize. So if we do a deserialize, then um, in this case, in this case only, if we are loading a keyframe from a file, then we want to reset the diff. Otherwise, we're not reloading a keyframe from a file. We're just jumping in the diff, and we want to keep that diff around. So uh, here we're going to do self.this.clear. And clear in here is going to have to clear out diffs. Um, I mean, quite quite frankly, it's just replacing itself with a, a new default structure. So self.icountmap.clear, self.alldirtied.clear. And you might be wondering, why don't I just return out a default or replace it with default? Uh, this allows the allocations to persist, uh, which means we don't end up thrashing. Uh, we're going to thrash on this inner vector. Uh, these inner vectors we're actually going to thrash on, but on the B tree maps and B tree sets, we're actually going to keep those uh, memory allocations around forever with the application. So diffs is cleared, I count map is cleared, all dirty is cleared, last I count is cleared. Uh, okay. And self on this. So this should now work. Uh, self dot persist. So if we're loading from a file, we want to throw away all the diffs. If we're not loading from a file, then we want to keep the diffs around. So in this case, when we see it crash, it should continue, and then we'll get new diffs, um, and then you set everything. So we got a crash, and let's make sure. So the diff, that went backwards in time. Perfect. And then let's make sure that update always works. Uh, OK, that's just making sure we went uh, forwards in time. So this assert is not here for stats or usage. It's only there to prevent bugs. It's just like a really pedantic uh, way of preventing bugs. And now I also want to make sure it works. If I have guest profiling, or not that, uh, auto keyframe at false. So what I want to see is if I can take a, a snapshot here. So while we're not using the auto diff, we still are using the diff thing, updating the diff at that. And we should be able to get calc stepped. And perfect. And this just won't do any of the diff updates. It did prevent a bug. Yeah, absolutely. Right? See? Like, yeah. Isn't that cool? Like, that would have been a pain in the ass to debug. Actually, we probably would have figured that out pretty fast. But it made it trivial to debug. So updating the diffs. So these periodic diff updates are going through. Everything looks fantastic. Um, OK. Let's see, uh, let's see if this works in networking. It should, because I think everything is in memory. I think we only uh, 
we do everything in memory. We're not actually applying the, we're not saving those auto diffs. So this should just have no effect on server. I think we did this actually correct, which is pretty awesome. I love when like the pieces start falling into play, but that's why like you see me thinking and saying, mm, and like swearing under my breath for like two hours when I'm trying to figure out how to design something. Because when you put thought into how you design something from the start, um, you allow things to just start coming together. So here we see updating the diffs on all these different threads. Uh, we see crashes coming through. Um, so these are auto diffing. Uh, we're not seeing any performance hit due to it, it doesn't look like, which is pretty awesome as well. We're running at basically the, the speed that we've always seen, which is like the two fuzz cases a second. So all the workers are online. Yeah, this definitely works over the network. There's uh okay, that's fucking so cool. Holy shit. Uh so get uh let's have auto diff off and then updating the diff here we can get rid of that. Okay. We're like really close now. Uh, git status, git commit, or this one. Git, git diff. This diff is brutal. Uh, git commit am added support for uh, auto diffing. Uh, code in place, kdnet needs to be hooked up. Uh, and code, is, I guess code is not entirely hooked up yet. We can only jump back to a predefined point based on the auto set. So we're gonna actually find the nearest one and continue up. So, um, 357 insertions, 172 deletions, not too bad. What are we up to for the day? Git log. Uh, I guess we started, holy shit. Here, get diff summary. Uh, uh, there's like a way to print the summary between two things. Minimal, uh, get diff, oh, dash dash stat. All right, that's not too bad. <laughs> For one day, that ain't too bad. <laughs> Holy shit. What is that? Effectively 3,000 lines of code have changed. 3,500 lines of code have changes today. Whoo! Whoo! We're chugging. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do a, a I count. So we can jump back in time, but the problem is this is. Uh, Do 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 do. Uh, jump, jump I count. So this is gonna deserialize that I count structure. Uh, this should correctly revert us back. It'll basically jump back to the original key keyframe state, and then it'll replay all of the memory changes very quickly. There are a lot of rooms for optimizations here. According to some calculations, it's it's 350k worth of coding. That ain't too bad. Where's my check? <laughs> how do how do I cash that in? <laughs> okay. Whew. So now what we want to do is when we want to jump I count, um I think we want to we want to ask the diffs first. And we want to say, "Hey buddy, 
Uh, is there any way that you can offer me an I count to this location? So let's say a uh, pub. We'll do a pub fn nearest self. This is going to return an option u size. Uh, try to get try to get the nearest I count to I count in our diff history while always going prior to the I count. Okay, so we'll do an I count here. And then in our uh, I count map here. Ooh, I wonder what we actually have on B-tree map. <sighs> Son of a pitch. So I want to do like a binary search on this. But it doesn't seem to have it. Which sucks. Um, let me see if there's a way that I can get this as a... Yeah, so basically I don't want to turn this into a vector, but uh, fuck it. Let uh, I counts. Honestly, do we just... If these are always in order, we can actually do this. We can just put the U size in here. What are we using I count map? Where are we doing lookups on that? I don't think we are. If we're not doing lookups, we don't need it. We're doing it on apply, but we don't we don't fucking need that. Um we can implement our own binary search. Uh instead of using that B-tree map. So update updates the mapping of that. We don't need it. We'll just put the I count in here. These will always be in order with respect to um set of changes. Tuple is I count uh, list of all modified pages uh, from the last diff. And then the final one is the serialized um, Francia state, state FN, AKA state FN. Now, uh, we're gonna temporarily comment out apply. We're going to do nearest, which is maybe going to become apply. I'm not quite sure. Range. Took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, man, I, I forgot what. Oh, so it's an oracle. <laughs> Together with your soul. <laughs> it's so true. Okay. Um. I don't know. Richard Johnson's at Oracle now. I'm I'm actually curious what his group's up to. I trust his judgment. I don't think he would do. I don't think he would go to a company like that unless he had like a a small little group, a good pocket in there. Beecher map range range dot i count next back. What the fuck is that? Range. Yeah, this returns an iterator. But this is this is gonna have like uh, uh this is going to go through the whole whole list. Oh wait. I wanna see what this looks like. Let's go look at B-tree map. Uh, B-tree map. Should have looked harder then. Uh, range. Let's see uh, how this is implemented. Range search. Included, excluded. Search linear. Whoa. Whoa. You fucking serious? It 
Is that really is that really doing a linear search on a sorted B tree set? Only works within B tree map nodes. Your map nodes are small. Um, I mean, I guess if we're adding those, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's another data structure that we don't really need. I think we're just gonna go this way. Like, we don't really need another set to reference this set because we can just search within this set directly. So I can do uh, here we'll do self. That does look really cool. If you're doing a B tree map, yeah, you're already doing linear search. Yeah, that makes sense. But in this case, I don't. I just don't think we need the map at all. Um, here we're gonna do a binary search on uh, diffs. A binary search by key. I think we have to do. Oops. Binary search. Yeah, binary search by key. We're going to key this by the um, uh, the first field, which is going to be the I count. And then we're going to match on this. And then in the OK case, uh, this is going to be a direct match. Uh, direct match. So that one, we're fine. Otherwise, or not else, whoops. And then in this, this is gonna be the error. Uh, I think these return indices into where, oops. I think this returns an index, uh, beat your map. It calls, it returns the result of the indices and it will return the location. If it's not found, the containing index where a matching element would be inserted. Yeah. So in this case, direct match. And then in this case, we have where it should be inserted. Where it should be inserted will always be before where it is. So if ii is uh, equal to zero, basically, if it should have been inserted before anything else in the set, uh, then at this point, we have to return none. Um, I count comes after anything in our database. Then in in every other case, this is this will be the nearest match behind will just be the ID. So nearest match behind. And then this will just be uh uh bu -bu 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 self dot diffs and we're just gonna index it by I, I, okay, and this will be direct match, direct match, okay, and we'll just, I, I, oops, uh, got a lot of shit going on here, in this case, we're going to get an okay of uh, self.diffs, I, I think we're just ready to grab it out. The second case is I I minus one. Uh, yes, yes it is. Yep, and that's why we did the zero check such that we could always subtract one safely. Okay. Thank you for that. That would have, I would have caught it because I'm gonna print and I'm gonna try it first. But yeah, that would have that would have fucked me over for a bit. In this case, we can just do a none. Otherwise, in all our cases. Uh, this is just going to be I, I minus one last I count. This is just correct. Um, search for the nearest I count below. Direct match. In this case, I count bef comes uh, before anything in our database. And at this point, uh, return the I count of the 
nearest thing below us. I think this is correct in all cases, right? And then from here, I don't want to recompute. So this is going to return a tuple of um, I count and uh, of nearest below nearest I count and then the diff index. So in this case, we'll get the I count and then we'll get the index as well. Uh, that way, we don't end up uh, re redoing a binary search when we're pretty much done with it. I I minus one, and then apply applies the specific uh, state to memory based on diff index uh, to get a diff index. Use the nearest uh, member function. And then in this case, this is just going to grab for everything up to diff index. Uh, apply all of those diffs. And then return. This might need to be an unsafe function as well. Because we're doing, we're doing some weird shit at this point by giving a user control. Okay, self.diffs.diffindex.clone. Get a vector to that state. Okay, we got a lot of issues. But any search uh, by key. We need to search for the actual key itself. I count. Maybe that fixes almost all of the issues. Not quite. Needs to be a reference. Uh, 290. Oh, yep, that's dot one now. And this is dot two now. That might fix a lot of the issues. Uh, yep. I don't know why I thought I named that field because I definitely did not. Uh, self diffs zero. Expected results. Oops. Uh, sum. Okay, I count this uh, expected U size. Uh, I counts are going to be U64s. Yeah. I counts are going to be U64s. Let index equals match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we definitely can make this a lot cleaner in a second. Uh... Expected a U size, find a U64. Yeah, this should be a U64 as well. Okay, 377. Save the difference. Okay, and uh, 2471. Apply. And in this case, we're going to set. Uh, Major MMU diff apply. Yeah. So let nearest is equal to um, major MMU diff dot nearest. I count. Uh, this will be the. We're going to ignore that. We'll just get the index for now. Dot expect failed to find prior uh, execution points. We're going to clean this up. We're going to make all this stuff failable and report uh, usable error, but we're just going to get it working first. Uh, apply index. Okay, so now we just need a way of actually... Uh, invoking that function. So let's put the prints and update on. Uh, print 
Actually, we're not going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do... Oh, we're getting close. We're getting really close. We're going to go into... Uh, plugins. KDNet. Source. This. Uh, jump I count. Jump I count. Okay, so then the place that we uh, set this. Uh, let's restore file name. Um, yep, so this is the magic. Do, 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 do. Let's see this. We're going to make another magic address. That magic address is actually not too good. Can't this be 64-bit? Surely this can be 64-bit. Target base address should be 64-bit. Uh... I don't, I don't want to use a, a valid address. Like, there's so much risk here. Uh, those are the direct KD bindings. Uh, KD FFI. Yeah, it's a U64. Yeah. Yeah, these should not be 32-bit. Okay. Target base address is equal to that. And this is going to be the one uh, for. Okay. Ah. You can tell I didn't write it because it's not 80 column formatted. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Drives me absolutely nuts. I don't know how people do this. Okay. Sends for a store. Ignore the 8 bytes. I don't know why. Okay. And what's this? Save for a store? Wait, was this the same code twice? Yeah. Is that duplicate code? What was it before? Oh, did I duplicate it? I duplicated it. That's my bad. Okay. This is the save, and this is the restore. Okay. And we're just going to go into Windy Baggy. Ooh, good song. Do 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 do. Okay. And this one. Uh the whichever one was E, this is gonna be a uh, save keyframe. So this is for saving. I'm gonna do this U L L and then this is the other one. ULL. Okay, done. Fixed. This builds. We're going to have to rebuild this uh, DLL. Uh, are you fucking kidding me? Right control space. Oh. Is that a custom thing? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So then it was fine. It was fine then. It's in its own, like, custom control space. Yeah, I, I thought it was... I thought it was writing it over, um... As if it was a normal thing. Or as a normal address. Uh, E, E... 
that's for save. Yep, and then for uh, load keyframe, it's going to be the F. Beautiful. Okay, let's get KDNet in the mix. You son of a bitch. There it is. And make good this. Oops. This. This. So time travel debugging should work just fine still. Uh, should be able to control C. Uh, let's do a save keyframe foopy. And I should be able to do keyframe calc stepped. We're back there and I should be able to do keyframe or KF. I made a shortcut. Beautiful. That's right. Yep, everything looks good. KF calc. KF foopy. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Fucking fantastic. Okay, so let's get that eye count plumbed through there. So we're going to add another command. Uh, first... I guess uh, we're just going to do uh, I don't know. What do you think? Rewind. Bang rewind. Uh, in that case, it's doing a sterling of args. I don't know what args looks like. Uh, unable to save keyframe. Okay. We're going to want to communicate with it so it can like send a message back. Um, I just don't know how to do that in the KD protocol yet. So, let me see. So we're gonna need to get the args, Sterling args. Uh, okay, expected that. Saving keyframe. I think args is just the is just a string. So I'm pretty sure we can do. Uh, uh, tool. I always forget the syntax for it. Or I guess uh, we we need to do um, a two i sixty four. Fucking Windows. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, a two i. You don't get a. A fail message for, uh, I need a string to, there we go. And this one does return failure, right? That zero if no conversion can be performed. Sweet. Args. We're going to pass in a... Uh, we're going to pass in that. The end pointer, I think, can just be null. Right? End pointer. End pointer. Pointer said the character that stops the scan. I think you can use null. Do, 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 do. We'll see what happens. Uh, base 10. And then, what does it do? It returns zero if no conversion can be performed? Oh my god, these suck, dude. They're so terrible. Oh, Why? What? I just want a failable string part. Of like, come on. Like, what the fuck? Like, how can you tell the difference between an overflow, a valid one, and a zero? You can't. You literally can't. 
Luckily, it doesn't matter because I count's never going to be zero in this case, but oh my god. Fuck off. A2I, does that... Um... I think this is fine. I think this returns zero if it can't be converted. Okay, we're going to just do A2I then in this case. What is going on? Whoa. A2I64 of args. Uh, int 64i count is equal to this. Unsigned. Int 64. Maybe I pulled in standard int. Nope. I... Apparently I didn't. So we're gonna a two i sixty four that we're gonna get the i count, and then we're gonna send. I guess we're gonna send that up as args. What size? This is just an arbitrary payload. Does this have size? Ignore the first eight bytes of the structure. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we're going to write the, I mean, I guess I can just write it as a string. No, I'd like to be able to process it here. So, um, I invalid, I count could not parse as a decimal integer. So if the I count is zero, then in this case, I mean, I can just send the args and size up again. So if the icon is zero, we just print, and then we don't actually send a command. Otherwise, we're going to send a, a 10, one of these bad boys. Doesn't need to be unsigned long, long. Just unsigned long is fine. Uh, unsigned long. E, F, 10. K. And then I'm going to send the arc. So I'm basically going to parse it locally, make sure it parses, and then I'm actually going to send it up just so I can reuse the exact same code over here. And I am not concerned about the, the shape of this data. So if the target base address is equal to this, uh, when send when it sends an I count to restore to, can't. Uh, can't jump I count and then we're gonna do self dot jump I count and we'll just do a dot parse here because we can fucking do that invalid digit in I count Jesus what is this on KD connection. Okay, and this will be the. I already forgot what I called that field. Jump I count. Option U64 stores the requested I count that was that we should try to time travel to. Okay. Jump I count here, fill that in. Looks fan fucking tastic. Uh, jump I count is none. Uh, restore keyframe name is that. Uh, Q load keyframe. We're also gonna need a Q. So that sets requested keyframe. Uh, this is fine. We're going to need a requested I count in here. Struct Frantia persist. Requested I count. Option U64. Requested I count to time travel to. 
requested keyframe is this. So this is going to be a Q, Q jump, I count, Q, a jump to an I count. Pretty fucking straightforward there. I count. We're just going to do this. Requested I count is equal to Q jump I, uh, whoops. Equal to this. Q jump to an I count. Set requested I count. That looks good, okay. Just making sure everything builds nicely. Looks like it does. So then in this case, we're gonna have if let, uh, 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 whatever we called that field, jump I count. Does this time travel debugging support branching at previous points? Um, yeah, like you could, you could go back in time and go forwards. Maybe not in the current, uh, maybe not with the current implementation, but yes, fundamentally this does allow that. So there, there might be like some limitation in how we encode the diffs. Like we don't have a, a tree based diff structure, but yes, if we were to go back in time, modify memory, it would continue executing in a different way. This is not. This is not a historical log. This is a fully immutable time travel. So, I count as this. Uh, Q jump. I count sum. I count. Q jump. I count. We're going to queue a jump to I count here. Time travel is true. Uh, self dot jump I count is equal to none. Okay. Time travel is equal to true. That will cause us to break out of KDNet. And then we should be able to, in our macro now, this after callbacks, uh, we should be able to do attempt to jump to a requested I count. Requested I count. I count self dot jump. I count. I count. Uh, yep. Wait on Katie. Oh, let's uh let's build this. A two I sixty four not found. Uh, that's gonna be in. Uh, where's that gonna be in? Okay, they put it in standard lib. I don't think that's in standard lib, but whatever. Uh, did I double underscore it when it's supposed to be single? Yep. I guess there should be an ATU AT, uh, to unsigned. Is there an unsigned variant of it? It doesn't fucking matter. It's a 64-bit number, honestly. To be honest, not a big deal. We're not we're not going to be pushing the limits of that number. Uh, here we can say if I count is less than or equal to zero. There, there we go. Everyone's happy. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, start that KD server up. Let's connect in. Okay. I have no idea what the current I count is. We'll just continue. And then if I did like I count zero, 
Oop. Uh, uh, what did I call it? Rewind. Five. Ah, uh, I gotta export it. What project is this? Uh, this is a project called TKO Fuzz. It's uh, like system level, time travel debugger, uh, deterministic emulation, and fuzzing framework. Uh, oh, I control seed that exactly as a new case started. Okay, so if I if I do rewind negative ten or negative fifty, really? Did I not rebuild it? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Rewind zero. Uh, okay, apparently that apparently that crashes. Uh, Apparently that crashes. Args. Um. Uh. Uh. uh Why? Why is that work not working? It's the output. I'm just gonna print what args looks like. I don't know if I can format string here. Probably not. Let's fucking see. You can't do anything anywhere you want. Holy shit, I can use a format string. Actually, for all I know, it since there's no type checking on format strings, who actually knows what that's gonna do? I don't know how people write in this language. I have no idea. Rewind one, two, three, and zero. What? See what happens. Rewind zero. Why does that crash? Why do the other ones not crash? Am I doing something stupid? That is identical. Is it the name? No. Release the debug control. We do that in all the other ones. Flags must be zero. Oh, uh, is it? No, no. H result callback, rewind. Okay. Well, that's cool. Why? How is that failing? What on earth would cause that to fail? I mean, here, I'll just do this. 
We know that this has to work, right? Is maybe it's a format string issue? Yeah, 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 yeah. Up, up. How does that crash? What what if I just return s okay? Oh, yeah, I can't do uh Of course you can't do nested comments either, so I got to do this. Woo! Woo! Well, I fucked that stack up. And make Will this work? Uh, KDK net port 3333 a keyframe.dll. Rewind zero. How does that crash? How does this crash? What's up, zero, zero droid? Thanks for following. How on earth does that crash? What is going on? Is it the name? Is it calling it rewind? Is that the issue? If I make a new name, does that, does that fix it? This name? What is going on? It's the name. It's the fucking name. Look at that. <sighs> ah, I hate this fucking language. <laughs> it must collide with some other other export, but somehow it still is in the namespace of this DLL when it goes to print the panic. I mean, that's creative. Holy shit. Hate this language. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I was probably hitting that other rewind function, but I was I was hoping it would, like, I don't know, namespace it, like it somehow had the ability to do. But, I don't know. Nope. Nope. Uh, I don't know. What's a better, what a, what's a better name? What's a better name? I can't do rewind. I think RW is kind of good for rewind, uh, but it's kind of hard to kind of hard to remember that. Be kind of rewind. BKW. BKRW. Let's see if we can just do RW. Problem is that kind of conflicts with like read write. Rewind five. Thanks, fucking thanks. Thanks. You really can't parse that one as an int? Do I need to like args? Do I need to advance args? Bruh. I got an extra error message. What do you mean? Above the check. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Ha ha ha. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, bruv. Nice. Okay. Uh, it was still going out there then, I guess. So we're sending that R rig. That should be sending out to there. So RW0, that should fail. Negative this. And then like 10. That should succeed. We're not seeing any prints. Let's, uh, let's put some prints in here. Uh, jump. Print jumping to this. I can't remember what I actually implement in my uh, code. So here we'll do uh, rewind zero. That should fail. Rewind five. Okay, that is seemingly not going through. So let me double check that we're actually getting the jump by account here. Uh, print got an I count. And we're just going to pr print the string, s.2 string. I guess I don't need to two string it. Got I count. Yep, probably should uh, put the string in here. Alright, now we'll see if this is actually getting sent up. Got an icon of 5. Okay, so that should get parsed. That will set jump I count. Which then should cause a Q jump I count. Uh, print Q jump I count. Okay, that's not getting hit. Jump icon, option U64, starts out as none. Here we parse it and fill it in. We were seeing this, so we we're definitely hitting this code. Only runs within continue. I didn't move it to continue to. No, I did. Um, I guess the, oh yeah, um, yeah, uh, we're just gonna, yeah, that makes sense. So here, what I can do is the same thing that we do when we load a keyframe. Uh, I can continue. Yep, thanks for that. Yeah, when we're reloading something else, we have to we have to give execution back to the debugger, of course. Q jump I count, jump I count. We can remove a lot of these prints now. And now we should be getting actually uh, jump. This one we'll want. We'll go here. Uh, print. Print want to jump to. Want to jump to this. Uh, want to jump to. I count actually going to this act i count okay looks good get that going get this going okay that will fail locally this will just fail because it's going to be like couldn't find a prior execution point. Awesome. Okay, now we're actually going to use our A2I. And we're going to allow negatives. Actually, should rewind just imply going back a certain number of cycles? We're just going to do that. Uh, let targets 
I count is equal to self dot vm dot instructions executed dot checked sub I count. And we'll do this. Expect integer underflow on rewind. No, what do you mean? No, get the instructions executed, check sub, the I count, get the target I count, we're gonna go there, get the actual I count, and then this is gonna be where we want to go. Okay. Move. Yeah, didn't like that. Okay. So if I do a rewind zero, if I do a rewind one, this should fail. Yep. Because I don't have anywhere to go back to. So now here, I should be able to go. Rewind uh, five or just one. That one failed. Failed to find a prior execution point. Okay, let's uh, uh, really, instructions executed, check sub I count. Then we're gonna look in the diff. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's not a diff by default. So I think what I want to do is maybe maybe when a keyframe is loaded, I want to update with a diff. I just want to like check in immediately. I think I need to do that. Uh, dot. Uh, so in reload keyframe, basically deserialize. When we decommit memory here, uh, in this case, I clear the MMU diffs, and then we'll do a self.persist. Oh, we haven't loaded a keyframe yet. Um, uh, we want to update it on. Um. Basically, when we go to when we go to sync box to VM for the first time, this is when we're gonna wanna apply a diff. And I think it's safe if we just always do it. We're just gonna do self dot uh, update. Call one of these bad boys. ballpark what we want. We want the I count. Okay, we're at the end, so this is fine. Get that. Self-serialize. Uh, write that out. So, I could make a special case where I would maybe have, like, where I'd save the first instruction, but this will just make it a little bit more consistent. We can make it a little faster and optimized. So I should be able to do a rewind. Uh, rewind zero will fail. Rewind one will fail. Um, but I should be able to do a rewind one now. Uh, oops. Go. Rewind one. What the fuck? Uh, want to jump here. Actually going to here. Okay. So this is saying where we want it to go to. And we actually end up going basically to the, the initial state of the VM. No surprise, not a big deal. Um, and then diff did not go forward in time. Um, that would make sense. So basically, when we continue executing, 
Yeah, I think now is when we need to implement forks. Um... Otherwise, we're going to have to throw away the diff if you go backwards in time. I, we're going to currently implement it like that. So what we're going to do is when you apply, what this is going to do is it will set... Uh, oops. Um, last icon, isn't that... It's going to throw away the undo buffer. Ba yeah, basically. Um, yeah, what I plan to do. Well, it will it will get rid of things in front of us. So things, if we jump back, you can only go backwards in time. You can never go forwards in time. Um, but yeah, we'll be able to fix this. I think, yeah, we'll be able to implement forks relatively easy. I just want to get this to work, get my confidence up understand what's going on uh so here last i count uh that's implied so let last i count is going to be equal to um self dot uh brrr, self dot diffs self dot diffs dot uh if self dot diffs dot lin is greater than zero, get self dot diffs self dot diffs dot lin minus one dot zero, right? The icon is the first thing. Yes. So get the last i count. Assert that the new i count is better than that. So this should still fail. I, I'm just uh, rechecking some of my logic here. Uh, self I count, self last I count. Nice. We're optimizing. This is going to fail. I know it's going to fail. Sometimes I like to check failure cases too. Uh, rewind one. Good. Failed. It should have gone back in time. Uh, diff did not go forward in time. So what we're going to do is. Um, uh, self dot diffs dot drain is it drain so there's drain there's um drains a range blah 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 removed even if the iterator is only partially so it's always removed okay so we should be able to do self dot drain diff IDX plus one. Um, and then this is if diff IDX is less than self dot diffs. Well, basically, I think this could potentially um, go out of bounds. I, I don't know if this API allows out of bounds. Vectory size. Well, that, that works as well. Self dot diffs dot uh, resize well not resize but truncate. So uh, resize requires that you provide a value. Truncate should you should just be able to give a length. Yeah. So in this case we'll do diff idx plus one. Uh, truncate list. I think truncate takes takes a size. Yeah makes sense not an index so we update we change the index into uh into a length by adding one to it okay so this should now work um okay okay this control c uh keyframe or um rewind one Okay. Wanted to jump. Okay, diff did not go forward in time. Um. 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 
last I count this, uh, new I count this. Oh, these are going to be equal. These are going to be equal. And I think that's why this is failing. Oh my god. <laughs> last I count, I count. Yeah, they're definitely just going to be equal, and that's going to cause the uh, forward check to fail, which is fine. Eight to six. Yeah, they're equal. Okay, so we're just going to say assert that it's greater than equal. I guess you could get dupes in here, but the dupes are like basically zeroed entries. So, and you'll end up truncating them off eventually anyways so it's I don't know uh, we're just gonna try this for now I could technically just uh, if it's equal do nothing yeah that's what we should do um, if I count is equal to last I count return uh, do nothing uh, that's not necessarily true we could have diffs we could actually have Here we're gonna say if I count is equal to last I count, we're gonna do let is equal to um, self dot diffs dot pop dot unwrap. This is gonna be uh, delete the old diff so we can replace it. And this is in case you modify memory. Uh, so like if you were to restore state, in this case it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, if you were to if you were to modify memory in the debugger, uh, there could be actual diffs that need to be applied for this I count. So I'm gonna say, if it's the same, then we're gonna remove the old one. But if it's greater, then we're gonna assume that the the new one's the new one. So if I count is equal to last I count, then we're gonna pop that off such that we uh, create a new one. That means the most recent one will always be the diff for that. Uh, because, like, if I were to edit some memory while... Yeah, if I were to edit some memory while I am at the same I count, and then I were to try to go back, it would actually undo what I had done... It doesn't really matter because these keyframes aren't going to get created unless you continue, but this is fine. That that code path is going to get hit so rarely that it doesn't even matter. Um, well, I guess it's going to get hit every time you uh, reload a keyframe. Okay, so this uh, rewind one, beautiful. So that went all the way back to CPU ID, which is not where we want to go. Uh, and now we just have to step up to that point. Oh, this is starting to look pretty fucking gnarly. Yeah, it'd be really hard to have forking uh, because it's hard to know which path that you're actually on. So here we're going to do an I count breakpoint. Um... And we're going to make this public, kind of. Yeah, so what we're going to do... It's not... It's not... Well, I mean, it's not difficult to make the data structure. That's fucking trivial. What's difficult is making a way that a user can input which branch they actually want to switch to and then have a way of automatically creating the names for those branches without a user having to name them or making it optional and then displaying a tree in uh, KD such that they can like reason about the shape of the graph that they made. Because um, a user can make a keyframe explicitly by doing a bang key KF. Uh, so I think the pattern will be like, you'll do a bang KF, which is actually a keyframe. It's like a full reset, and then you'll use the diffs on top of that. Um, I think that's going to be the model, and that's like how I originally intended for it to be. Uh, I count breakpoint. 
register eye count breakpoint. Okay. To register, do it on that. Let me make sure I uh, allow an infinite amount of these. I think I do plugins. Uh, this is on VM or shared VM uh, I count breakpoint. Yeah, it's a vector. I register them. Binary search, blah, blah, blah. Remove them. Yeah, okay. Search by that. Cool. The graph theory is easy. Like, that's, it's, it's really not hard. You just, you just make a copy of the tree basically when you when you go back in time and then continue in a different way it's just it's it's pretty straightforward but having a user interfaceable way of indexing those is is significantly difficult like literally what i could do is every time i call every time i call apply i could just make another thing of like um this could be like trees vec uh or like hash set or whatever and this is like the basis and then just the diffs, and then I would actually use the drain thing instead of truncate, and then when I do drain, I would drain them into this location. Like, it's totally doable. It's totally doable. It, it's it's like five lines of code. Um, I just don't know how I would actually interface with that and, and index those different diffs. Um, what was I doing? We're gonna set up the. We're gonna set an I count breakpoint. So basically, when you do a uh, jump I count, uh, this is going to have. Okay, we're gonna register an I count for where we want to go to target. Register an I count for where. We actually want to go. Um, and then requested I count. I think we're actually going to do the computation here. Um, so we're going to compute that here. And then requested I count is actually the I count we want to go to uh, target I count. We're gonna jump there, want to jump there, actually going there, we'll keep that print in, apply, fantastic, 2486. Um, we're gonna have a small state machine in here, so we're gonna uh, register with self, register an icon breakpoint at this target. Okay, so that should work just fine. Now we need to go into the uh, crash handler, uh, shared, or plugins. Or, uh, yeah, plugins, KDNet source. This, we're going to register a callback for an I count breakpoint, I think. And then we're going to implement. Uh, fn i count breakpoint mute self takes in a franzia and it even takes in an i count okay and instruction and i count breakpoint has been hit then we're going to do self.debugger break uh, that's on all I counts. We need to filter this because other users might be using I count, so we need to filter this down and let's get access to uh, the target I count, the requested I count. Okay, we're going to make a function for this. Impl Franzia pub fn requested I count self. Option U64, get the current requested 
I count from a uh, time and travel debug request self dot persist if there is no active time travel debugging this will be zero or this will be none okay and then what we want to do is um set request side count Uh, this one's a little bit dangerous, but uh, actually this is going to be clear requested I count. Um, clears the requested I count back to none. We don't need a way to specify an arbitrary one. We don't want that. Uh, this should be called when the I count finally is hit. You know, we can actually do this internal, can't we? Yeah. So in our FC I count breakpoint, what we're going to do is uh, invoke the callbacks. And then here we're going to clear um, requested I count if we hit it. So if, if the cur i count or actually this it's possible that we can overshoot Th like we don't get a hundred percent control if the expected i count breakpoint uh if sum this is equal to self dot requested i count breakpoint or requested i count we're gonna set this to none sin persist uh, requested time travel, time travel, uh, I count state, uh, self dot persist requested. I count as none. So basically we're going to do all the callbacks. We're going to clear our state internally such that this kind of goes back to none, which would turn this off. And then here we're going to say, if I count is equal to the self dot, uh, here we're going to do the same thing. If the sum I count is equal to self dot uh, or franzia dot requested I count, then we're going to debugger break. Uh, hit a an I count breakpoint due to a time travel debug. We've finally arrived at where we want to break into the debugger. Okay. Okay, so now I should be able to go forwards, hit this, rewind one. Uh, attempted to insert an I count breakpoint that will never be hit. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, add I count. What's it called? Add uh, I count? Nope. Okay, uh, I think it was in load keyframe up here. Uh, register I count breakpoint. We're just gonna do this after we've applied these changes. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna do this at the end actually. At the very end, once we've done everything, we're going to see if, uh, and we do need to sync, we're going to say if uh, let sum I count is equal to self dot requested I count. Okay. Breakpoint. Uh, Register an I count breakpoint if we are stepping forward to a specific location. And that's fine if that executes a billion times because that's a, a binary search. It's, it's very cheap. Uh, target I count. This is just I count. 
Okay. So, go, control C, UB, rip. Uh, before us is a compare, rewind one. Uh, this is gonna go back and then this is gonna happen. Hmm. Let's see what's going on. It might be because we're hitting... So what we can do in here is we can say... Uh, debugger break. Uh, guest state. Uh, guest state present. Here. Dot is none. Only break into the debugger if we're not supposed to single step up to a given point. Looks good. And then we'll put uh, I count here. Uh, print hit I count BP here. I count print matched. We're getting there. Go. And then we're going to do a um, rewind one. How's that happening? Uh, print registering I count BP for this. I count then up here. Oh, we don't set that anymore. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, we need to set a requested I count. Oh, that should be set from here in queue. Uh, jump I count, this will update it. Requested icon is targets that, and then uh, that will always update it. Jump icon after callbacks. If there's a requested icon, then we're gonna want to jump to. Oh, we don't want to take. Okay, jump icon. I mean, we can actually do a take now because uh, jump icon will always refresh it. So this will refresh the requested I count with the I count, deserialize using that I count. We're gonna come into here. This is gonna apply all the diffs. That will then register a, an I count breakpoint and then we'll print when we actually hit that there, which we should now. I think we have everything right. Okay, UB rip, uh, rewind one. Wanted to jump there, actually going, okay. What's going on here? Why is that looping? Um, that's because we're constantly setting it. So we do need to have, um, I guess this will be like uh, time travel I count. We'll just set it as a different location. So the requested one is what we want to set. And then requested I account to time travel to option U64 active time travel I account search. So we're gonna search for that. So requested I account time travel I account. Get the current I count from uh, target I count for time trial request. Here we're gonna queue that. Time travel state doesn't need them. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, get this. Okay, so we wanna use this here. Here we're going to assign it in queue. Here we're going to take it and then we're gonna call jump I count here we're going to clear it if it is this. Uh, we can do this. 
Okay, so you only have this, the definition, here where we queue it up, and here where we take it. And then in jump I count, we'll actually go to set the uh, time travel I count, which will be used here, here to get it, here to set it, here to... Um, Here's where we register it, and here's where we clear it when we hit it. Okay. Yep. Uh, one thirty-six and something here. Okay. Okay, G, control C, UB rip, uh, rewind one. Um, this is just an access violation. Okay, matched, and then we're we're at the instruction above. Yeah, we're trying to undo uh, uh, whole system states. Yeah. So this AV, this AV is not a big deal. Um, I need to like silence uh, a break in. Uh, so basically the only issue now is that we're getting a spurious, not a spurious, uh, we're getting a very valid uh, break. So the way debugger break works is I think the second argument tells you break and always. Break and always, uh, if that's not set and we don't have a break in, then we're not going to go into it. Uh, I think there might be a requested break in after we send that transaction. Um, we hit G, we went back, we hit G, basically for some reason the, the debugger is sending us a break-in packet, uh, let me see if it's happening again, maybe I hit control C, G, control C here, uh, rewind one, <sighs> fuck, so like, Um, matched. That didn't even look right. Let's double check it. Control C. We're at this location. Uh, we can just grab symbols quick. Okay, this is where we are. We're in Adler 32. If I do a uh, rewind one, then a G. Now we hit our match breakpoint. We're in Adler 32. And if we look at what we were uh, disassembled backwards, yeah, we're at the instruction before. So it seems to work in the break case. I think it's not working in the Q5 uh, case. So here we can do a KF. Um, we're going to go forwards. I'm going to keep going until I get a breakpoint break in. Okay, here we're at an AV. Um, reload R U U B rip. Okay, rewind one. Okay. Wait, we're saying I count breakpoint for that. Ah, we have our fuzzer running. We have the we have the fuzzer stuff injecting. 
Um, and the fuzzers injecting a different fuzz case each time. Um, what I could do is uh, inject. We're going to silence these when we're uh, doing that replay. That would uh, that makes so much sense. Um, basically, we're going back to the start, and then we're uh, we're running the uh, inject and stuff, and the because we're effectively reloading back to the original state of the keyframe. Um, what I think I want to do is all of the uh, load stuff. So when we do an inject callback, uh, callback dot start inject. So all of these callbacks, I think I want to disable during the replay phase. In fact, there might be something to be said for disabling callbacks almost entirely. I'm trying to think. Nah, I would want users to be able to get these callbacks. So inject won't get called unless this is a fresh keyframe. This is sync box to VM. Uh, when this happens, uh, I want to pass in a... Uh, if you disable the injection, how do you replay? Um, if, we, if we took a diff keyframe, yeah, we do want the injection still. Uh, what we want is that we don't want the... We don't want mutate... Yeah, we don't want mutate and generate to get called, but, oops. I think of all of them as kind of the same class. So mutate, we, mutate is going to persist in memory, so that's still going to be in the same shape. Uh, so call back dot star mutate. So if self dot, um, what was it called? I count breakpoint this if this dot is none. You could also save the state of the mutate RNG. Nah. I don't I don't want it to regenerate the inputs. It, it they're already in memory and they're they're persistent. So all we have to do is this. Uh callbacks mutate and then generate up here. So if this, if that is none, we're gonna make a comment on this. Uh, don't mutate while doing an I count replay. And this one, uh, don't generate. Okay, if that is none, and that's fine. We don't want to call those like uh, during a, a kind of like a jump back in time, anyways. Here, I think this is now correct. G, we're gonna let this run for a little bit longer. Uh, K, U B rip, reload, U B rip. We might have actually branched to where we currently are. I'm gonna find a better spot. Fucking hell. Okay, you be rip. Okay, this one we definitely did not branch to. Rewind one. Uh, yep. And that's gonna replay all the way back from the start to where we are. And there we are, SAR EDX7. That's the instruction prior. Fucking so cool. Okay, so I don't know why we're getting this break in. Maybe we can special case this and kind of ignore that break in. Um, <sighs> prints. Okay, what other prints do we have here? We're just saying I count BP. We don't need this anymore. We know our shit works. Yeah, we definitely want inject to get called. Um, and it's part of my like standard like my documentation is if you have RNG in your inject routine or any other routine, you've thrown determinism out of the out of the system. Um, 
So the only things that we allow entropy on are mutate and generate. And thus, if we don't call those while, uh, while we're replaying, we should never have non-determinism issues unless someone implements a plugin incorrectly, in which case they fucked up and it's their fault for ruining the determinism of the system. So, okay, good, debugger break. We always wanna break into the debugger when this comes through. So I don't know why I'm seeing that break in request. Um, let me see if I'm, I think, I don't know what would be sending that break in request. Uh, break in always. Let me just double check that we're not uh, doing a break in always. X this. So this is going to be the code break in always. There's a chance that maybe there's some like, uh, maybe the crash handler or something is sending a break in always up to us. So we're going to just take a little look-see here. Uh, obviously, the initial break we want here. Now we want to do uh, rewind one. So that is a Q5 with a false. So, yeah, I don't know why we're getting that. And that means there's a break-in request pending. Maybe I need to drain the break-ins after... Um, I might need to drain the break-in packets when we set the I count breakpoint. Ah, uh, break-in, break-in, break-in pending. Break and pending is true. Oh, I wonder if set got break in false peak got break in break and pending. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, time travel. We have a break in. I think we want to maybe not set time travel then, because normally after time traveling you want that initial break. Well, I guess we're getting that with load keyframe. You know, this time travel break, this I might not need anymore. Uh, now that we have, we explicitly do a break in, I don't think I need to put that there anymore. Let me see what happens. That was some legacy stuff, I think. Uh, that broke in because it started a new case. Oh, we're getting a lot of... Finally, we got one that didn't crash. Okay, uh, rewind one. Okay, so um, that was kind of weird because we were in a different uh, want to jump there, actually there, went back in time, and then I think we hit the crash. Let's see. There might be an issue since we're resetting the crashes. There might be like some weird edge case. Um, so we're getting the initial break-ins. Those work just fine. Rewind one. Okay. Uh, so there is some weird issue. Does the whole world rely on that flag being there? Let me double check this. Go this rewind one. What's going on? We broke something. We broke something. Okay. What did we possibly break? Process exited with zero. Go. 
Control C, rewind one. Matched. Okay, try it again. This, rewind one instruction. So what's happening in this case? Registering I count breakpoint, process X did with zero. Um. Okay, what what would be causing that? Frantia gave us zero commands. Um. Uh oh, generate. Oh, yep. This is the issue. This is the issue. Uh so. We're just gonna do this actually. So we're gonna undo all those changes we made. So that's repro. If it wasn't initialized. Okay. If we're in recover mode, then we do this shit. Otherwise, uh, uh, used unmodified input or equals this. Um, do not modify the input if the time, uh, I count time traveling is in progress. So use unmodified input or equal is sum. So if it's something, then we want to use the unmodified input, which means this whole block will not get executed and that will bypass um, like this clear path that was killing us. Fuzz input take. I think we put it back in. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. So we call it fi. I just want to make sure I'm not clearing that input. I shouldn't be. Ooh, fi.clear. Use unmodified input. Okay, so then in this case, uh, fi extend from slice if we're in recovering mode, which we're not. Uh, I'm just going to put one restriction on here. If this is none, uh, don't clear the input if we're in time travel mode. Okay, if time travel is none, then we clear it. Then we come down here. Uh, if we're in repro mode, then we use unmodified input. Otherwise, if we're, if we have some time traveling I count, we use unmo we have, we set that, which means we don't call mutate or generate or any of these mutation strategies that would affect the input. And FI is completely unaffected uh, from this point. Except for in recoverage mode, but if you're in recoverage mode, then you're you're not doing time travel stuff. Okay. Uh, rewind one. Yep, we got the breakpoint thingy, and we should be good. Okay, so now I think we can get rid of this. Okay, that was a new case. Okay, new case. So many crashes. Control C, EB rip. Uh, EB rip. Reload. R, EB rip. We might be at a branch target. Uh, rewind one. Nice. Rewind one. Woo. 
You be rip. Rewind one. Fuck yeah. Okay. So obviously that's slow because we don't have the auto uh, auto keyframe on. Every one million guess instructions. Let's make sure this is correct still. Update. Last on a keyframe. Good. Okay, so now it'll make a bunch of key intermediary, intermediary uh, diffs. So now we should be able to go backwards in time much faster because it will be within a second of, or within a million instructions. So rewind one. Woo! Failed to write in command buffer. Why is that happening? Um, actually, I think I know what's happening. It's the, yep, it's when we go to sync all this shit. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Sync box VM. Sync box to VM. We're going to do. If it wasn't initialized, we don't want to call inject unless we're at the root. It's actually Vim 8. Vim 8.1. It's like literally like two weeks old. Okay, so the issue that we're having is that we need to know whether or not we went all the way back to the start. If we went all the way back to the start, then we can call inject. Otherwise, we shouldn't. Why not a Unix system? I really have no need for a Unix system right now. This is this is working just fine. I'm happy with this dev environment. It's get me everything I need. Makes it easier to stream, play games. I have plenty of other Unix machines for workstations, but this is not one of them. What are you doing fiddling with the calculator app? Our goal is to find bugs in uh, calculator such that we can find an exploitable bug that we can get code execution on. I'm just kind of just looping around right now. Uh, self persist guest VM initialize is true. So I need to know whether or not I went back to the original keyframe state. Is there a bug bounty? No, there's definitely not a bug bounty for that. It's a useless bug. Anything we'd find would be useless. Uh, function. We want sync box to VM. In here, if we do, if this update comes after, I'm trying to think how we can do this in a clean way. Uh, if we update the MMU, so this has been updated after the injection has occurred, so we should be fine. I don't, I think we can actually not call inject because, uh, we have, I think honestly this whole Yeah, because this is where injection occurs. That would cause memory updates in here, which would cause us to update that in the diff. And then that would be what we ultimately uh, reload to. So inject here. 
Can I just not do this whole function then? Get the current eye count, track the start time. Honestly, I don't think I want any of this shit. All of this stuff will be uh, tracked. I think I just want to sync the box state to the VM. We can grab that wasn't it stuff. Um, actually, uh, wasn't it, if we're ever doing an I count breakpoint, I think we can just set wasn't it, I think we can just set this to true. So if we take a look, this probably gets cleared out in our, uh, yeah, this gets cleared out in our deserialize, but we don't want to do that in other cases, okay? And then we can get rid of all of the spaghetti code you didn't like. So clear this. Basically, it's going to show up as initialized and we skip everything. Uh, what are we looking for? Yeah. Yeah, one big, one big reason we're looking at... Cal I mean, you can't live stream fuzzing for bugs that would give you a bug bounty. That would just... Like, that, that just wouldn't make sense. Um, so we're doing silly bugs just for fun. Going through workflow. We're learning how to write tools. We're just doing a bunch of really cool stuff. So time travel I count. Here, we can get rid of this. Okay. Now, in the was and it's, this is guest... Guess VM initialized. And then this will be if self dot uh, time travel I count dot is none. Otherwise, otherwise we just leave it as what it was. So otherwise uh, we don't want to always set it to true it's possible the previous keyframe never initialized it instead we inherit the init state of the previous keyframe as we're only rewinding ctfs are boring to me some, a lot of people like that. I mean, people like that probably a lot more than the content I produce. It's pretty easy to get uh, a lot of a lot of people interested in CTF stuff. I just find CTFs boring. They're not real bugs using not real tools and not real targets with not real exploits. Um, so almost none of the process is really relevant to realistic work in this day and age. Back in the day, it was more relevant when you could make a CTF challenge similar to a real world bug, but real world bugs now are just so much different than CTF bugs that they're just, they're different, they're different specializations. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, go back. Uh, this failed. Uh, diff didn't go forward in time. Are there CTF challenge sites? Oh yeah, there are plenty. Oh, there's CTFs for almost everything you, you could dream of. Forensics, binary exploitation, web exploitation, embedded exploitation, cryptography, like anything you want. Rewind one, rewind one. Okay, so. Okay, that shouldn't happen. Got a CPL zero crash. Uh, registering an I count breakpoint for that. Wanted to jump to this, but instead we're going to 437. Yep, so we're going prior, registering an I count breakpoint, and then somehow we're getting a crash.
Um, any sites in part? Uh, any sites in particular? Um, it kind of depends. Like, what what style of uh, what style of uh, CTF are you looking for? Do you want something that's live? Do you want something that's uh, competitive with other people? Do you want something that you just are working on binary challenges and crack me's and that sort of thing? Um, rewind one. Okay. Okay. One hundred, hundred, hundred. It seems like there are some boundaries where this crash is on, and I'm not quite sure what it is. What projects have I worked on? Ooh, I've worked on so many different projects in my life. I can't even, like, think of how many things. I don't know. I just do a lot of fuzz and stuff. I've, I've fuzz almost all hard targets at, at some point in my life. Browsers, virtual machines, kernels, hypervisors, uh, pretty much everything. I'm trying to get it to, to repro in that like weird crashy way. I should be able to go forward. Let's see if I can go forward and rewind. Yeah, okay. So, diff did not go forward in time. Wanted to jump to that, actually going to that. Panicked that diff did not go forward in time. Last I count was 614, new I count is 514. Meanwhile, I struggled with fuzz sign. I don't know. Like, I mean, you, you obviously, like, have much better programming ideas than I do. You've been correcting me in a lot of, a lot of ways here. Have you used Kira? Kind of. Uh, it's like, Kira is a CTF tool, and that's kind of where the, the, that's kind of where I say there's, like, a divide between CTFs and real research. Kira is not really usable on real targets. Like, maybe if your real target is a specific 200 line section of a code base. Um, I'm not saying Curia is bad. It's just very specific to small CTF challenges. Um, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't scale well to, to full, si full size things, which is the, the goal of this project effectively. Um, okay, so we're having an issue where somehow I uh, want to jump to that. Registering an icon breakpoint for 806. Okay, then we're going to do this. Um, wanted to jump to this, but instead we're going to this. Okay. Fine. 664-9805. Um, we're actually going way behind it, so we're going to 614-9807. And then this is complaining. I feel like that I count breakpoint is not getting registered. Want to jump. Oh, yeah. Uh, if guest state is sum, register that I count breakpoint. I just want to see that get registered correctly. The ordering doesn't really matter here, I don't think. VM mute, I count breakpoints. I count breakpoints don't get cleared uh, between resets, so there's nothing lost there. This is what I do professionally, yep. Been doing it for about 10 years. Mr. Jones. Rewind one. Okay, perfect. Okay, wanted to jump to this. Actually, going to this. Registering I count breakpoint for this. Attempted to insert an I count breakpoint. Okay, so we do need it after. Um, 
Yeah, we do need it after. And then this update. I count is this. So if we do the sync. Uh, print loaded KF I count is this. Nice. Okay, go. Control C. Rewind one. Come on. Crash, you bitch. This is like actually usable in like real time. <sighs> <laughs> We have this one bug we have to fix, but but I, I see the light, and the light is gorgeous. Like, go back 100 instructions? Sure. No problem. No problem. Uh, okay. Ended up getting a blue screen there. Um, there must be, like, some state that maybe is getting screwed up. Uh, okay, and the, the I count thing kind of makes sense, too. I think, I think, I mean, we know there's a bug here. I think uh, the dirty lists are getting cleared, and we're somehow not restoring fully each time. And, uh, I think we'll see this pretty obviously when we go back. Yeah, so this got stuck. Go. Rewind one. Nice. Okay, so I think what's happening is, uh, we're probably not applying the diffs correctly. Maybe the truncation is causing us some issues. So loaded keyframe, I count is this. Registering an I count uh, breakpoint for this. Then we're gonna say wanted to go to 05. We're actually going to uh, four seven, so we're going way before. Then we're gonna load the keyframe. Uh, the loaded keyframe I count is Ooh, actually going to 29704749807. We're going back further. We're like, we're going back to an I count. We're going back too far. Um, wanted to jump to that. Actually going to this. Loaded keyframe I count this. Um, yeah, I, th I think we're like not updating, we're not applying the diffs correctly. So like here, uh, where do we do that pop? It, on the update, if diffs line is uh, greater than zero, if it's, if the I count is equal, Do I just want to not drop that update? No. If it's equal, we're just going to do nothing. Um, nothing to do. I think there might have been some like really obscure edge case with that pop. I'm, I haven't reasoned through what the bug is yet. But we are basically rewinding to uh, the incorrect I count because the I count should always line up. Like when we when we save a diff, we know what the I count is. So if we don't reload the same I count that we expected, um, then we have a huge problem. Rewind one. Hundred, 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 hundred. Okay, we'll go forward a bit. Um, okay, Kelk had a crash. That was a normal crash in Kelk, so I don't think it's a big deal. 
rewind one. Rewind 100. Now the question is, is the bug still here or have we like, okay, calc trash. Yep. I mean, it's not crashing anymore. It's hard to say if we haven't like hit that edge case yet. So let's, uh, we'll tear it down. We'll try it a couple times. We'll see if it repros. But I think there's some weird condition where the pop might cause an issue. Rewind one. How fucking cool is this? God damn. Go forward, rewind again. 10. Yeah, I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing the issue anymore. Okay. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Try it again, go forward a bit, go backwards. Yeah, I can't get it to fall over. Oh, that backwards execution. EB rip. Oh, look at that. We, like this call, was this fun? We went back up through the call. God, that's so fucking cool. I don't know. I, I'm not seeing the issue anymore. I think I think we're set. I can I can keep trying. I can try. I can try my hardest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a crash anymore. So I th I think this is good. Let's make sure um uh auto keyframe. Probably want auto keyframing off by default. Uh we actually probably want this a, as a tunable. Yeah, we're going to do uh, struct frenzy persist. We're going to do auto key, key framing option U64. If this is set, this contains the number of instructions between each automatically generated keyframe. This can Reduce the time it takes to rewind a uh, VM when doing time travel debugging. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to make impl franzia persist, or actually franzia. Grab this. Blah. Okay. Gets the current uh, we don't even need a getter we just need a setter sets auto key framing every uh, n instructions if set to none the only keyframe will be the original keyframe or uh, the original keyframe okay set auto key framing uh this will be uh frequency is this option u64 frequency k 
keyframe if let sum auto keyframing is equal to self dot persist dot auto keyframing then we're gonna do since the last time so compute number of instructions since last uh, auto keyframe if this is over the auto keyframe threshold take a diff uh, I should probably call it like auto diffing. Uh, serialize the current states and update the diff logs. Uh, update the time of the last one. Good. Okay, so by default, this is going to be off. And what we want to do is we'll set auto keyframing. In KDNet, we'll just do this on like the init stuff. Initialize the plugin pr prior to use. Uh, argument I count breakpoint loaded keyframe. I think here, actually, debugger break. Here, we're going to do frames here dot set auto keyframing, um, enable auto keyframing for easy time travel debugging, sum one million. Okay. So when you're using KDNet, um, it will automatically turn on that stuff. So we should be able to do a rewind one yeah. Okay, looks great. Uh, loaded keyframe I count is this. Uh, this is gonna be sync box state to ah box box state to yum state. Uh, Apply this as the first diff. Okay, loaded keyframe I count. Uh, want want to jump. Okay, this is going to be um find the nearest I count in the diffs. Jump to that location in the diffs. This code's fucking nuts, dude. And then we'll see uh, what kind of speedy prints we have. These serialized things are annoying. Uh, rewind one. Okay, our K special was the wrong size. I think, ooh, registering. I count breakpoint here, get rid of that print. Okay, and look for this K special. If this is not equal to that, maybe I'll just set the length to zero. Hmm. The problem is this is this is per um this will vary based on your OS. If the payload length is not equal to the transfer count as U size, um, maybe I just pad it out with zeros. If the payload length is not equal to the transfer count as U size, if the payload length is not equal to the transfer count. Except payload. R is that versus that. We're getting ours is this, theirs is D8. It's off by one field. But this is correct for um, 
This is correct for Windows 10. Actual bytes read. It's equal to that, which then causes KD to complain. That for that data may be invalid. Oh yeah, so this will just do dot transfer count. That should shut up KD, but we'll still have the print here. Okay, reload EB rip. Uh, rewind one. Nice. I actually, f I want to find like a syscall boundary because I want to like rewind up into the kernel. I think that'd be kind of cool to see. Uh, I could do like a. So here we have a page fault. If I step, I'm now in the, or I didn't want that, I wanted P. Okay, we're on K, page fault. So now I can do rewind one. And look at that. We can hop back and forth between the kernel. Oops, looks like, uh, Looks like one of the p commands is getting eaten. I think that's just an issue in the KD stuff. Rewind 10. Rewind 1. Well, that's fucking cool. <laughs> I would say that's a pretty damn successful stream. Oh, time travel I count delta. That is done. There's a lot of optimizations. We can change the structure. We can have it allow forward time traveling. Bunch of things we can do. Um, but I would say that this is a, a ballpark pretty good. So, yeah. That's pretty nifty. Okay, let's, let's do it again. Let's do it again. I got I to make a clip. All right, so we're going to load up, we're going to start KD, we're going to load up this uh, thing to connect in, we're going to continue execution, we're going to control C, now we're at this, uh, I actually want to, I want a page fault specifically, here we see a page fault, reload, if we take a look at where we are, uh, you rip, so we're about to page fault on this, and then... I can do a P, now we're in, oh, interesting. Was that handled here? No, no, we definitely, we definitely jumped into a different thing. And now it's like, oh, I wanna go backwards. Okay, we're back where we were. Oh, I wanna go back further. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Sweet. Well, I think I'm going to call it there. It's 7 in the morning. It's been a 14-hour stream. I'm going to get some sleep. This is awesome. So, thanks everyone for showing up. This was an absolute blast. Yeah, I recoded all night. Yeah. It was a lot. I mean, well, we can get this commit up. So we can do uh, git status, git, <laughs> git status, git commit am, added uh, I count rewinding via rw uh, when big command. Okay, nice. So we can we can see how much code we wrote today. We have that in our history. It's uh, from this diff, wherever it is in the log. Oh, we got rid of it. Git log. Oops. Um. Added noodle. Yeah, so this was the 14th. This is when we started dev. 
uh, get diff stat this. Yeah, about 4,000 lines of changes made today. Not bad. Not bad. It actually might be a little less than that. Uh, this has noodle in there, which technically I think I did last morning. But, yeah, we wrote some code today. All right. Uh, Y'all have fun. Thanks for tuning in. This was a blast. I'm really excited for this functionality. Uh, I'll see you guys later.